It's time for Mac Break Weekly. Andy, Renee, and Alex Lindsay are here. We're going to talk about all the Mac news, and 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 particularly about the flaw we found last week. The full story behind the root login. It's all coming up next on Mac Break Weekly. Netcasts you love from people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for MacBreak Weekly is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is MacBreak Weekly, episode 587, recorded Tuesday, December 5th, 2017. High Def Buddha. MacBreak Weekly is brought to you by Joby. Joby's Gorilla Pod is the signature flexible tripod amongst leading photographers, journalists, and vloggers. It's changing the content creation game for good. Grip it, wrap it, stand it. See the full line at Joby.com. And don't forget to enter Twit at checkout to get 15% off your order. And by Video Blocks, by Storyblocks. Get all the high quality stock video, audio, and images you can imagine for $149 a year. Go to Videoblocks.com slash MacBreak today. And by Texture. Access the world's most popular magazines anytime, anywhere using your smartphone or tablet. Try it free for 14 days at texture.com slash twit. It's time for Mac Break Weekly, the show where we cover the latest news from Apple. Renee Ritchie's here from imore.com. Hello, Renee. My head is so big, Leo, I can't get it Andy-sized. I've been trying, but I don't know what's going on. Andy's head is giant. I don't know what he's It's the done. new version of Skype. It's like it doesn't show me the chat. I don't know. Anyway, I'm trying my best. I hope my head is... Your head looks perfect. Your lighting looks okay. great. Yeah, you actually look yeah. really good. And of course, it, when are you moving? Soon, right? Uh, it sometime between now and middle January. Now that you've got it all set. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> let's, let's move. <laughs> Uh, we also have Andy Anako now. Uh, the new improved Andy Anako, where his voice matches his lips. Oh, are you doing <laughs> I'm that joking with you. I'm joking okay. with you. <laughs> <laughs> it's great to see you, Andy. Uh, Chicago Sun Times, of course, cwob.com, and uh, we owe a little bit of uh, gratitude to this cat right here, Alex Lindsay from the Pixel Core, who who hooked Andy up, as the kids say. I like good audio. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I cannot lie. I like to spread the love. I cannot lie. Well, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Sound Devices is going to make a little money off of us uh, this <laughs> this holiday season. I bought myself hey, a Christmas gift. Just let me buy. Yeah. Renee wants you know, that's, one. That, yeah, that, I want that, just ordered that, one. That's, one. that's one of the big truths. People have been asking me about, should I get the iPhone 8 or, or the iPhone 10? And the thing is, once you find the th a tool that is perfect for you, that you realize that, oh, this solves so many problems, you forget about how much something costs. I was assuming that you can you have the money for it. But it's like, whereas my eyes would have like glossed over, oh, sure, I'm going to spend $600 on an audio interface recorder. That's going to happen. And then I use this. Uh, yeah, that's going to happen. That is definitely going to happen. <laughs> I think that that's true. And I think, you know, Apple has shown that people are not as price sensitive, <laughs> at least based on what looks like uh, the best selling iPhone of all time. Yeah. Not as price sensitive as we, we might have expected. I mean, the iPhone 10 uh, is, they're now up to, uh, I think we reported this last week, half a million units a day, according to uh, Ming Chi Kuo right. and KG Securities at uh, the Foxconn plant in China. That's, uh, that's what is it, about 15 million a month. That seems like they should be able to feed the demand, but maybe, maybe not. Well, they're, they're not getting to, I think, less than a, or about a week of delay now. They're down so, to a week. Yeah. So I think it sounds yeah. like they've gotten whatever was, whatever it was in the pipe is through it. Yep. Yep. And, and they've really beefed up uh, production. So that's, that's pretty impressive. I have so, to say, I was, I was kind of amazed at the difference. I haven't used the eight, but I have, I, I was carrying around, I was in India last week and carrying around uh, a seven and uh and my ex and the reason is the seven is on t-mobile so it works in india and mm -hmm. and uh taking pictures with both of them i was amazed at how much better the x camera is than the seven is it really you like i was tell. taking pictures in the same environment and i could i was like i'm not gonna they use say it's anymore. like a half stop better in low light but it'll engage the telephoto lens the quote-unquote telephoto lens about two stops right. earlier than the seven oh, interesting also now you can get the unlocked version they just started offering that in the U.S., so that would actually be maybe something you'd want to take yep. a look at. You don't have to be tied to any carrier. Um, it, that's about right, right? It used to take a. Uh, it took actually, it's taken longer in the past. In the U.S., it's weird because we get them sim free day one. I think you have to. to. 
I think I bet you there's rules. I bet the CRTC or somebody. Maybe, but like the I think the little known secret is that the T-Mobile one I believe is always SIM unlocked, and the Verizon one is GSM unlocked, even though it's CDMA on Verizon. But the GSM slot is unlocked, so people usually who want it right away they usually go for one of those two models. Yeah, I have a T-Mobile. Um, I don't know if it's SIM unlocked, but I should try it. The, the, uh, Verizon has a deal with our FCC in the U.S. that they can't lock their SIM slots, so the LTE yeah. stuff is unlocked. Um, but I use the eSIM. I might, I might regret that because it was really nice to be able to pop the SIM and put it yeah. in another phone. And the eSIM is kind of tied to that phone now, right? Yeah, not only that, but like for AT and T, uh, I had to. I returned. I made the stupid mistake of returning my iPhone 10 the day before I was headed to DC for like three or four days, and thought that I could just you know re re sign in with my old SIM. But no, of course, AT and T uh, canceled out my old SIM as soon as the new eSIM got created. Right. So it's not so you could switch from one to another. Now no. you'll basically have to go. I had to go back to as soon as I as the first thing I did in DC was find an AT and T store and give a nice young man five dollars to give me a brand new sim so here's so my question use my old phone here's my question all right now i've activated this with is this like the old bad old days with cdma once you activate it with verizon you couldn't use it with anything else or does this e-sim is it reprogrammable now that i've activated it with t-mobile let's say i wanted to move to verizon or at and well i guess it'd have to be a, a gsm carrier at&t can i call at&t and say take this sim over or have i locked this phone now i don't know Renee, yeah. do you have any idea? I don't because I haven't played around too much with the with the eSIM. I have heard stories where people say it locks right away, but I don't know if that's Remember that's in the old days the in the iPad it did. And this was AT&T doing this. The iPad had that it still had a SIM, but it had the non-denominational SIM, <laughs> the secular SIM. And but once you in at first, and I think they they ACT backed down on this, but when you activated that iPad with AT&T, that SIM got burnt into AT&T land <laughs> and you'd have to get a different sim if you want. Now, I think AT&T is back down on that. So I just I'm yep. let's uh, I would love to get some clarity on this eSIM cuz really that's not an improvement. That's kind of like the old CDMA activation thing. You still I mean I had to call T-Mobile and activate it, right? With the uh, the um I am uh EI number and tell yeah, them I I have a new phone and they said, "Okay, oh, we'll activate e it." Yeah, yeah. Maybe I, they might be able to re. There's got to be a way to change that, but I would never. Yeah, well, they I have to because they, they, Apple, <laughs> Apple's very well. Also, Apple's aware of the resale market for it, so they. Yeah. I'm sure they wouldn't have it locked in, but I'm sure they're looking at it from a point of view of isn't it nice that you don't have to worry. There's you don't have to, we don't have to include a tool. We don't have to say here's how you insert your SIM into this thing. It's like nope, you buy it. You tell us what your phone number is. Your carrier will set make sure that by the time your phone arrives, we'll be ready to rock and roll without you having to do anything else. So I think we have to. That's that's. One error it's not, I have though. To say that it's not, though, because I got my T-Mobile. It was not activated. It was not usable until I called T-Mobile and assigned that IMEI number to T-Mobile. Huh. So it's not yeah. just comes out of I, the box ready to go. I have to admit, with, really, with my ex, I, I just popped yeah. the SIM out of my, my old phone and stuck it in my you new phone. You could still and then, do that. And I think that might be, I'm just saying for users, maybe that's the thing to do. It was just like it was working in minutes. Right. You know. So what So what, who's carry, what carrier did you use, Andy? AT and T. Was this a review unit? No, no. I bought the first. The one I have right now is a review review unit. The one that I bought, though, when I bought it, it asked me. It took me to like an AT and T page within the Apple Store app, saying, "What's your phone number? Great, we'll make ah. sure it's set up." And so when I took it ah. out of the box, it was it was my phone. So they don't with. do that with T Mobile, which kind of is, I guess, because it's really unlocked. They just say, "Who's your carrier?" You say T Mobile. They said, "Okay, fine." Yeah. <laughs> and they don't do anything. That's they don't verify or anything. Right. And then when you get it, you have to sign it up. So I want I really want to know. I mean, how locked am I am, am I? Have I just in effect by using the eSIM well, carrier locked my phone? SIM. No, I think you can still pop the SIM out and put another SIM in, can't there's you? There's no SIM in it. There's no SIM slot? There is, but there's no SIM because it's oh. an eSIM. Yeah, yeah, but maybe if I put somebody else's SIM in there, would it I'd override? Be what do you think? It's, I would guess. I'd love to know. Would. I more Get on that, will you? <laughs> Get I'm not in the, you know how call. restricted I am that I'm not in the U.S. I would love to be doing all this stuff, but yeah, I have you to, have a different have situation. Call serenity. Well, and it may be Apple it pay. may be a call to Apple. I don't know because I yeah. I could tell you right now if I call T-Mobile. No, I'm sure there's there's so go, many huh? U.S. phone nerds. I'm sure that they've done this for years now and have all these answers. I've just never paid attention to them because I'm a selfish Canadian. Well, inquiring minds, and we don't, we've just yes. raised an issue we don't have the answer to. But I, but yeah. I, I, this comes now because they're selling these 
uh, you can actually apparently go into the store today. If you order it online, you'll get it December 13th. But if you go into an Apple store today, you could pick up an, an unlocked uh, carrier agnostic iPhone 10. So what did they do before today? If you went to the Apple store, did they force you to pick a carrier? You had to pick, but if you stores? pick, as I pointed out, if you pick T-Mobile, they would go, okay, good. They didn't do anything. <laughs> like they just said, okay, which tells me it was a carrier unlocked version, right? Yeah, so it's all just sophistry. I guess. Yeah, because if you go in and say, I just want the phone, here is 1200 bucks. I have an AT&T SIM at home. I should just plug it in. Because what, I mean, I mean, there's yeah. a lot of people yeah, who just buy them to ship them overseas, and I'm sure they're not buying locked versions. And, they've been and it used to be one. the advice was to get the Verizon one, because yeah. then yeah. you get all the radio bands, CDMA and GSM, and an unlocked SIM And the Qualcomm SIM modem. But who else does CDMA? Yeah, there's I no. have, thank you. The, let's talk about that. They did it again. There's Qualcomm modems for the CDMA versions, and there's Intel modems. And once yeah. again, the Intel modems are not as fast as the Qualcomm modems. So there, it's it's a yes and no thing. So Infineon was the original iPhone modem company, and they got bought by Intel, and Apple went to Qualcomm. Now Apple's using both because Apple and Qualcomm are at war. Jeez, but they Apple sure doesn't. Are. Oh boy. Apple doesn't spec them for that high speed anyway. So if they were using Qualcomm modems, they would still ship with whatever they said LTE Advanced 800. It wouldn't be enabled for gig and gigabit Ethernet. Uh, sorry, gigabit. LT or anything. Apple's basic thing is, hey supplier, we need a we need someone who can run a ten minute, uh, sorry, a ten second, uh, hundred meters. And they're like, we can do it in nine, fine. We can do it in nine point five, fine. As long as it's under ten, they don't care. So whatever the spec is, if you can beat it, that's fine. But they they're not implementing anything over it. Okay, uh, and, and we know in the past that that actually Apple artificially slowed down the Qualcomm modems to their spec. Here's the that's test. Yeah, uh, that's the. Here's the testing from a PC magazine. And it shows that the orange line is Qualcomm. It's not a big difference. The Intel uh, is the blue Qualcomm line. makes better modems. I mean, they, they they invented a lot of the technology that's in them. They just simply make better modems right now. Where you'll notice the biggest difference is where the signal is weak. The Qualcomm continues to get good speeds even in poor coverage areas. And the, so the, the trade-off here is that if they went purely with Qualcomm modems like they used to, everybody was paying, even people outside the U.S. was paying the CDMA tax uh, because we don't need those CDMA radios. They don't do any good for us, but because it was Qualcomm, Apple had to pay for them for every phone that it shipped anyway. Apple eventually would like to do it themselves, right? I mean, they don't want to be uh, beholden to either Qualcomm or Intel. It's great that all those lawsuits are happening now, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Before Apple rolls out the I, the C series uh, modem chips or whatever, <laughs> Lord, or the L series modem chips. Mm. All right. So, what's our advice then? If you're going to buy an iPhone, buy it unlocked. Why not? Should you yeah, get the Verizon I mean, or should you just get the uh, un, un? For a lot of people, the the leasing programs like the iPhone buyer program or whatever the T-Mobile and AT&T versions are, you pay like thirty bucks a month and you get a new phone every year, and that I'm going to do that next financing. time because so it's, it's it doesn't cost any more, right? If you get from Apple, yeah. Uh, and you get Apple Care. Do you get that for free, or do they build that yeah, in the Apple price? Apple Care Plus, I believe it's for free. I so you don't you pay an additional, and it's mm. yeah, and you're still at zero percent finance. And what? And as long as you keep that phone in good shape, or you get it repaired to acceptable yeah. shape, you trade it in at the when the new one comes out, and you and you just continue to pay that twenty five bucks or thirty bucks a month yeah. every year. A listener just uh, who remained nameless. Um, uh, so they bought a, the iPhone ten, and uh, they popped uh, they popped out its Verizon. At, sim and put in their at&t one and it just worked fine yeah yeah we thought that that would work with a mm -hmm. with verizon so now i'm kind of like wishing i just bought a verizon phone. that was always the advice buy the verizon at least yeah. in the previous years buy the verizon turns out it's still the case because you if get you the Qualcomm modem you get CDMA, CDMA yeah. and gsm yeah. and just unlocked because the fcc won't let them lock it yeah. that's in the u.s <sighs> well that there's there's the tip for the day if you haven't bought your 10 yet and it confirmed, okay, so. well, it's been the tip for a couple yeah. of years now, but I it confirms know. that it's how, the how same for 10. I say it all show. the time, buy the Verizon yeah. one. Yeah, but, but it confirms it for the 10, which I wasn't sure about because yeah. I thought the eSIM is complicating things. All right. Uh, hate that, so. l last week was a fun show because in the middle of the show, we learned about a flaw, <laughs> fixed the flaw, and then it came back. But we'll talk about that in just and a that second. that was only the first flaw, yeah. Was <laughs> <laughs> I did not sleep much last week. I bet not. We'll, we'll, we'll give you the, the skinny, the scoop on all of that. And iOS 11.2, which is out now. So happy that we And heard. I'll tell you the story of how I reconditioned my 2012 15-inch MacBook Pro. And it's great! <laughs> <laughs> it's great! It's like the old days. It's the MacBook God intended. I was going to... Well, after Marco's 
column about the perfect Mac book, which is the they still sell the 2015 edition on the Apple Store without the touch bar, with a 15 inch screen, it's with great. a real keyboard, and um, and you have a lot of them, and you have one right in front of you. In fact, I have one in front of me. I have. And uh, and I, I said, oh, I should get one. And John, our John Jammer B said, we got about a hundred of those. <laughs> <laughs> Three. Three. Well, that's yep. all right. I just, I just, uh, my my 2015 MacBook Pro just got just came back from service. Has a brand new battery. Lilith. And, NP, and Lilith, Lilith uh, 14, I think. And just and because the battery is fused with the bottom plate, they also had to give me a new bottom plate, which means that the dent <laughs> from the one bad oh, nice. thing I did with it is has been nice. repaired. So Lilith is her crumpled and because, horn and because, is fixed. And because the and because the battery two two of the cells were swollen, even though it's like well out of warranty, they did it for free. <gasps> Baby Lilith. So uh, I was, I was. So we had four because I took one home, <laughs> and I, mine was the one. Remember, I had put all those comic book stickers on the keys. Yes. And I put, uh, I put a sticker on the front and everything. But I found out that the iFixit sponsor, iFixit uh, kit, has a spudger that's perfect for moving stickers from mm. keys. And I just got them all off. Look, we got a whole. So uh, what? So actually, I. I should trade in mine for the most recent of these. Although I have to say, mine's 2012. It's an i7. It, okay, it caps out at 2.3 or something gigahertz. It's fine. I had upgraded it with another world computing SSD. It has a Mercury SSD. It's great. So this one is, you have to go by serial number, right? Because they're all uh, A1998. Yeah, that is. So which one? which one's yours, John? Do you know? Oh, you have yours. So whose are these? Do we take them from people, or are they just sitting around? They're kids. They're kids without MacBooks now, Leo. Are there kids crap. without MacBooks in this house? These so employees actually have acquired these. Is there anything that's available? These are available. No, we. Those are available. Let me look up the serial numbers because what's that's what the funny thing is they're all the same model number from 2012 to 2015, but if you look at the serial number, you can see how they're equipped and all that stuff. Right. And so get the find go go into your closet, find the best one, clean it up, peel off the stickers, <laughs> reinstall uh, High Sierra. I don't. The, it's the whole. I'm still working on getting mine to really run as well as it did before High Sierra. Oh well, that's another story for another Ugh. day. In fact, let's talk about that in a second. But first, a word from our sponsor. I'll get. I'll give you one one guess who our sponsor is. I'm, I am magnetized lingly. This is probably not good for a microphone. I was going to say, I don't know how. How does Leo sound now? It's like a little thing of like, so you know. I love my Jobies. These are the original Gorilla Pod. Do you know when the Gorilla Pod first came out? Take a guess. Take a guess. 2003. I can't remember. I want to say two, 2004 or five. 2003, 2004 or five, 2008, 2006. So you guys are pretty close. I'm impressed. Like, I remember when it came like out. Cats, I was like, oh, like cats, they didn't have a little magnet on forever. It. Yeah, these are these are the. So uh, watch. You can <clears throat> these. <laughs> oh my God! Do not do this at home. But these are socketed joints, and they make them. By the way, I want to get the new. Uh, there's one that's aluminum. It's metal, right? I have that. Oh, it looks so beautiful. It is like the, it's like the jaw of life. A jaw of camera. Like you, you can you can take an SLR. And attach It'll it hold everything. to a pole. Yeah. So these these are all socketed individually. These Gorilla Pod legs, which means you can bend them. You can and the one I have, which I really like, this is the grip tight one, has magnetic feet. So like when we were on <laughs> we were on the river cruise, I just glommed it to the side of the boat and had the camera. <laughs> and this <laughs> I have the this is the camera uh, attachment that holds any camera, right? It's expandable, and then on it it has a little Bluetooth dongle. So this is like the perfect selfie camera. Wow. 10 million sold. Yep. And they're getting better and better. The new the new designs, of course, feature their signature ball and socket joint legs, but now rubberized grip rings, stainless steel reinforced ball heads, a 90 degree tilt. They're getting better and better heads, which is really nice. Although yep. these are quarter 20 threads, so you could use any kind of head I guess you wanted on these. But they've got some really great 90 degree tilt heads for landscape or portrait modes. The flexible legs wrap around objects. Unlimited angles, precise composition control, stability on even on uneven surfaces, <laughs> uh, and they have—I mean—they have them for all sizes. They have them for point and shoots for action cameras like the GoPros. Three—if you have a GoPro and you don't have a Joby, you're missing the boat. And I really like the fact that I can put my iPhone or any phone in in my uh, grip tight, and it's just ready to go. 
It's just ready to go. They have them for DSLRs, too. You can mount. You know what's a really good use? I don't know if you've done this. Um, you can also mount uh, strobes on these. And they're so inexpensive, you could place strobes all over the place off camera. Right. So you can really have a nice portable lighting setup. Any device with a quarter 20 mount. Grip it, wrap it, stand it. Choose the Gorilla Pod that's right for you at Joby.com. And don't forget, if you use the offer code TWIT, they're even more affordable. Actually, I got to do that because I want to get the metal one. Your phone is sliding. My phone is what? It's sliding. It's oh, look at off. that. It's just sliding. You think it'll fall off the table at that, some point? I better put concern. it in a Joby grip tight right here. There you go. Now it's not going anywhere. I can even attach it to the microphone with its magnetic legs. Now the mic's going to fall over, but the camera phone is going to be safe. Joby.com. 15% off. Actually, I'm going to take advantage of that and get the, get the nice one. 15. Got them for my god kids. They love Aren't them. Are they great? Yeah. They're so great. Yeah, they just I, put them I, everywhere I, and they I, hang and shoot. I love them. I, I always have one in my bag because yep. whatever it is I need to do by yep. putting my camera somewhere, whether I need it to be a tripod, whether I need it to be something that will let me hang it from above, or it's just I've even I've even often used it for as like an impromptu iPad stand or an iPhone stand. Oh yeah. Because you can just bend you can bend like the feet into like little hooks and put it on the top of the seat back in front of you. Just it's it really earns its money back and it's well worth buying the real thing. I have I have used them since the first time they were shown in CES. And I have wow. used them uh, on every continent except Antarctica. <laughs> I haven't been to Antarctica yet. Yeah, yes. me neither. That's my yes. last continent yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. And then you're right. Everywhere I go, this is what this yeah. is the one I I carry in my briefcase because yeah. I have it at all times. And I really this is the Grip Tight One GP Magnetic Impulse, the full name. And the having the Bluetooth remote, it's always on here, so I don't lose it. But I could pull it off, and now I can do a selfie anywhere. I have a f an Instagram friend who uses those, puts them on something like one mountaintop, and then runs to another yes. mountaintop and takes his like hero <laughs> pose yes. with his Apple Watch remotely, yes. and it's amazing. Yes, fifteen percent off. Them. Great holiday gift for the photographer in your life or the iPhoneographer in your life. Just go to Joby J O B Y dot com and enter the offer code Twit at checkout. I, you know, I love our sponsors because. It's all stuff we use, and so we could just really enthuse. Yeah. <laughs> enthuse. It also makes an excellent hat. It does. If you just want to, <laughs> yeah. And yeah, you can use them as selfie sticks, sure. And all kinds. Well, of it ways. remember, if just a just a warning though, uh, you have to make sure you get the three uh, legs into the perfect pyramid shape, because if they're bent a little, you won't get the <laughs> psychic residue the, from the uh, cosmic. Yeah, you want to channel it right. Yeah. yeah. So get and yeah with the grip type if you get the grip type one get the uh, get the Bluetooth uh, dongle on it too because that's really awesome. Uh, enough of Joby. Let's talk about last week. So last week, uh, well, it turns out and actually, uh, the guy who uh, we we mentioned the the tweet uh, that uh, Lemmy Orhan put out the Turkish developer. We saw it. Lemmy Orhan Erdian. I'm assuming that's how you pr pronounce it. Tweeted. Dear Apple support, we notice a huge security issue in High Sierra. Anyone can log in as root with an empty password if you click on the login button several times. Are you aware of it, Apple? He got a lot of heat saying that's not how you reveal a security flaw. So he wrote a Medium post saying, hey, let me explain. Uh, <laughs> we, had, we had actually found this issue a couple of weeks before. There were mentions even earlier, November 13th, in the Apple Developer Forum we informed Apple about it on November 23rd. Uh, Apple either hadn't noticed or hadn't replied or hadn't said anything. And uh, he f he found out because he says uh, he works at Turkish Software Craftsmanship, I guess. He said that uh, my, uh, my IT team, my infrastructure staff informed me they had to set up a root password on my Mac so it won't have the issue. And he saw it. He said, what? So he decided to tweet it. Um, and I'm kind of glad he tweeted it because we were able, yep. during the show, we came up with a mitigation. Uh, I made it a little more complicated than it had to be. A couple of people tweeted me. You know, you could just type that all in one line. Uh, give your root account, if it is active, a, a password by typing uh, sudo password, P-A-S-S-W-D, root, and then hit return. Um, but the issue is normally, actually, I think kind of, Renee, you, you went through this all on iMore.com, and yeah. you spent a long time, another sleepless night for poor Renee yes. Ritchie. Um, the, the, normally, job. the root account isn't enabled on a Macintosh. Yes. So you wouldn't normally even be able... If if it were enabled, was is it always a blank password? I guess it would be. No. 
Oh, it's uh, not. If, well, if you enable it, I believe it forces you to set a password when you At enable it. At that point. It. Okay. Yeah. So and this was this was uh, this was strange. So it wasn't enabled, but if you the first time you tried to like you just press return or you clicked login, it would then basically burn in that login attempt and make it enabled with no password. Oh, that's what happened. Yeah, that's and why it, it, it like went, a checkpoint. Yeah. That's why it went uh uh uh, uh yeah. and then okay, and from then on it would do it with the blank one. Yeah, and then I noticed uh, you know, it, of course it could be used to log into your machine if you had. Uh, multi-user login turned on, right? Yes. But you had to turn And some that. people were saying, like, I, I tried. I, I just could not get other to show up. But some people were saying you could go into guest. And then if you were smart, you could escalate from oh, the okay. guest account. Okay. If you had guest enabled. Like, it was just, there were so many things. And it's some, if you had file vault, it would prevent it from unlocking maybe. But you never want, like, a lot of uncertainty around these situations. Right. And I did, when I set up the 15-inch the power book, I noticed the default is to have uh, the other enabled. So you would have to. I think File Vault kills that when you turn on if File you turn on Vault. Fire I think it kills Vault. that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so machines that had yeah, because when I before I, I logged into it just to see what was on there before I you know refreshed it, uh, and it didn't it didn't and I couldn't figure out how to get a multiple another user. Yeah. So I could try the root password. So yeah. Apple within 18 hours. Thank you for tweeting this because Apple was ignoring it. Had ignored it for at least two weeks. Within yeah. 18 hours of Lemmy's tweet, they fixed it. Yeah, that, that was absolutely the right thing to do because we often talk about how there's news that something's been compromised, there's a security flaw, and it always turns out to be something like, well, if you can get someone to do this under their own account and then do this, then you deploy this payload. This was as simple as just log in as root, no password, do it a couple times if it doesn't work the first time, and you're in. That was so simple that you really had no choice but to raise the alarm, make sure people have locked down their their machines until Apple puts out a, a, a bug fix because it was that big a problem. That was the barn doors way open. We went and, around the studio and uh, the offices and made sure that everybody with a Mac uh, had fixed it. Uh, yeah. Not with the Apple patch, but with the, the workaround, which was to assign a password for the root user, which is a fairly easy thing to do. I mean, you could do yeah. it in just a couple I mean, of lines. In, in generally... Uh, always look at ways to kind of close up your security holes <laughs> you know like like getting rid of the other getting rid of you know if, unless you really need that turn that stuff off turn on you the, know what, you know, yeah you know, it's yeah, the quick sign it's in. really tight and like i'm always uh amazed at people who leave their phone unlocked you know like like without a yes. passcode yeah. i think it's like, more than half but apple's changed that because they now require you to set a passcode right when you set up the for phone for a lot of things for apple pay for touch yeah, id for face yeah. id which has changed the numbers dramatically but until I mean, I then i think most people didn't they said oh, i just want to swipe up i just want to unlock when i have or they do it when they travel but they would turn it back off again when they got home or something yeah i mean it's just such a huge i mean it's it's your your i mean especially if your mails coming in there and everything else and especially now that there's so much tied up there that you can really have a, a horrible day if Someone gets a hold of that, and so that phone especially. Yep. Yeah. So then Apple updated. So Apple pushed out a fix, which it's interesting. Oh, Leo, before we go, on, I should just say that um, there are. So it, it's not that people ignored it. The people were actually stunned. Like the people who could actually do something about it did not know about it. They were stunned and surprised, like everybody oh else. And there are ways to communicate with them, but they just nobody was bothering to check that forum. Uh, and I don't know how he communicated with them, but Apple does have like a security hotline that you can get through to the security team. And they are usually very responsible Had about they things. done that, it probably wouldn't yeah. have been fixed yeah. sooner. They should have. I, but you can't that. expect everybody to know about those things either. So it's sort of a... Yeah, but it's. I, I have to say that the, there's some part of the infrastructure at Apple that I think needs a lot of work is how they communicate with the people who keep their software and systems running. Uh, this is... The, the fact that Apple didn't even reply to say we have heard you and we're working on it, even if they don't get even if they don't get you know, a reply from Tim Cook saying thank you, thank you, thank you. Here's a thousand dollar iTunes store credit. Uh, it kind of falls in line what I've been hearing from a bunch of people on a bunch of different areas about how there seems to be a thicker wall between people who need to communicate with Apple, and we're not just talking about users, we're talking about people at much higher levels, and being able to at least get confirmation that what they've said have has been heard. Okay. Even when even even when they say even when they say something that they've that Apple took to heart, not bothering to get a response that says, Yep, we heard you and we're working on it. Let so me, you basically people are left to think what happened. Let me just point out, I just Googled how do I tell Apple about a security flaw? And the number two result is Contact Apple about security issues with all the information you need 
to let them know there's a problem. Yeah. Yeah, so it isn't problem. that hard to figure out. It's it's frustrating. There are people who are like emailing top Apple executives about do it, uh, why can, why can't I, me and my wife both register Face ID, and then suddenly they're getting a response back from the top person yeah. and like Tim Hi, Cook has some other things to do. Well, although if you mail Tim Cook, he probably puts it to the right. If you catch him on the treadmill, like he'll respond <laughs> he's in a meeting. He'll catch back. He's very later. responsive while he's cleaning his office. <laughs> the clover machine has to be sparkling, Alex. It has to be sparkling. Yes. Uh, <laughs> security and privacy researchers to report security or privacy issues that affect Apple products. Contact product dash security at apple dot com. And if you want to encrypt it, here's our public key for PGP, so we can encrypt it. There's also a security announced mailing list. There's, you know, I mean, there's there's ways to tell them. So yeah, no, and it's absolutely their that. job to do it. But they, their their red team and their security team, they they were up all night, and they would probably have rather fixed it, you know, the yeah. week before than yeah. it had to come in. Yeah. So, uh, but then, so first of all, the the way yeah. they patched it was interesting because it was a silent update. Yes. Is that uh, how often does Apple do that? Once before. Once They've before. Once before. Yeah. So you didn't have to look for it. You didn't have to know about it. You didn't even have to you reboot said, oh, your you machine. It would just appear. Mm -hmm. You could, yeah. So you could do it right away. But they said like later that afternoon, it would be start. It would start pushing live. And I think everybody. especially because it was tweeted out, they were just like, we got to. I love it, though, that they can fix stuff uh, like that silently because that is really an important capability. Yeah. It's a capability, for instance, when we talk about Internet of Things devices, we say one of the critical things in all Internet of Things that devices must have, especially routers, is automatic updates that can be pushed out by the manufacturer. Because otherwise, course. you have to figure it out, check it, update it. Of course, the eventually someone will hack into the thing that is updating them all. That has then, happened in the past, yeah. actually. Or yeah. there's a bug yeah, in I mean, the update, which has happened in the past, too. Yeah. Never the, well, and that's why Apple is very judicious about using it. They've only used it twice yeah. now. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. you know, it's, that's, it's, this is a good occasion for using that. There, there, there is some discussion about that because you're absolutely right in that security updates are super important for IoT devices, particularly as they get cheaper and cheaper and you don't know where a lot of these chipsets are coming from. But the problem is that if you uh, build in a mechanism so that an automatic update can happen, then a bad person can hijack that system to push a, a malware infested update to the device too. So it's not quite as simple as that, but I, uh, I think we're going to have to have a big meltdown before people really understand that when they put a smart fridge in their house, it doesn't mean that you just get a barcode reader for your <laughs> food. It means that you also get another point of access, another point of entry into your house for bad people. Well, then we should probably point out that you can disable it. If you really don't like the idea of Apple being able to force these upgrades, you can go in and disable the oh yeah the, where do you uh, do that it's in settings I'll, I'll pull it up and see where it is but so you can turn it off in your settings you typically would do that in an enterprise where the it department wants to really keep an eye on uh updates yeah and managed devices stuff. are a whole other ball of managed wax, devices they have their own policies yeah, and everything yeah, yeah well then apple updated high sierra and broke it <laughs> yeah whoops because it went so fast it probably wasn't in the yeah it wasn't in the. Uh, they reintroduced the, the flaw. It a different team. We have one team that fixed it, and the right. other team that's just working on the update. And that's a separate that, pipeline. Yeah. yeah. So where do we stand now? Should what should people do? Uh, I've done all uh, the it, updates. It, Is it still there? If so, if you did the if you did the patch before you actually updated to the new version of High Sierra, then updating the new version of High Sierra would reverse the patch, and I believe you had to reboot and then reapply the patch to make it all hunky dory again. And it doesn't warn you that you have to reboot. So that's the word. No. So I think the, the problem here is that it, what Apple said that it was the update was required before you run this patch, but they didn't force it. Um, and I think if they'd forced it or said you need to update to, uh, you know, high Sierra 13.2 uh, or whatever it was first, then they applied the patch. It would have been fine. But because the patch required it but didn't enforce it, some people use, ran the patch on the older version of high Sierra and then software update did its thing and just overwrote the patch. So if you have 10.13.1, that reopened the root bug, you can then go install the security fix. And you'll have, by the way, you have to find it. You have to Google. You well, know, if you had 10.13.1, it had the flaw. And then if you updated, so did 13.2. Uh, but the patch was for 13.2. So if you ran the patch on 13.1, then installed 13.2, you just gave yourself the bug again. Got it. Uh, and you'd have to, you'd have to, I think it wouldn't recognize the patch unless you rebooted first and then it would recognize <laughs> the patch was available. So is everybody fixed or no? I mean, for that, uh, there's still the calendar 
bug that we'll talk about later. Yeah. But for yeah. that, I believe. So, so uh, should people just prophylactically reboot? Yeah, I mean, one of the downsides of this uh, update in place is that it doesn't reboot. Like this update, the, the patch that hit everybody, it Can't didn't force reboot. you to reboot. Yeah, yeah it, it couldn't reboot. And it's usually a good practice to reboot anyway uh, when you do these sorts of updates because you never know what processes they really hit. Um, so reboot, yeah, apply the patch. And at that point, you should be good. And you can try it. If you have any doubt whatsoever, just lock your computer or just go to um, settings, security, click the little lock icon and try to log in with root uh, blank password and make sure you're protected. That's probably a good thing for everybody just to do right now. Go to your yep. system preference panes. Uh, and normally they're locked. If you can unlock them with root blank, <laughs> then you yep. might want to. But how do you get that patch? You have to search for Apple security patch. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, or I believe, again, if you reboot, it should offer it up to you if you're not already running it. Oh, it should do it. It should say, hey, we've got an update. Yeah. So it shows up in the update? I believe, I don't know if it's just a push notification because I ran it right away. That was my mistake. And I can't go back and un Here's what you search. This is what you should do. Search for security update 2017-001. Yeah. And, uh, or you can even just go directly to uh, support.apple.com and go to the support note HT208315, 208315. And that will let you down. It actually has all the information about it, but it will yeah. also let you download the update and manually apply it. And so, and in fact, it even, it even gives you a, a kind of a roundabout way of seeing if you have the problem. Using a command called yeah, what? Do we think that the root thing was just a programmer just wanting to, to make some, make it easy to do something while they were working? It might have been a test that they just didn't turn off again afterwards. Right. Like just a test condition. And then they're like, they went on to the next thing and didn't go back and reverse it. Right. Yeah, I would imagine that in, uh, in, uh, in inside <laughs> Apple, they often have root enabled. Uh, just, I don't know why, but sometimes you want to get in there and yeah, I mean, it just seems like a poke. Right. It just seems like it would be something that, like, a, you're working on something, so you just kind of throw that in so right. that you can just quickly get into whatever you need to do. And yeah, then it might just, be more complicated because the issue, I don't know, was it, it might be more complicated than that, though, because it was a kind of a strange bug. Right. And sometimes it's future features that they're testing and they can't, they don't talk about them because they're future right. features. But so we, don't will, we won't back. know, frankly. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Suffice to say that over the past few weeks, a lot of additions have been made to the standard iOS and macOS QA scripts that they run at Apple before they release something. This, this was a, this was a profoundly dunderheaded move. And you've got to believe that one of the, one of the monkey tests they run where they just run scripts to see if we can break this thing. It's going to be, here is every single dumb thing that some we could have done to compromise the login screen. And they just found another dumb thing they forgot to test for. Well, I'm guessing they're going to test for that from now on. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's made it to the list. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So two weeks before they fixed it, it was mentioned on the support forums, but don't count on support forums being the way to notify Apple of anything, right? Call the security. You can Google it. You, it's not hard to do. Uh, so, so it, it should be fixed. Anybody who's running high CR should reboot just yep. to reapply that patch in case. And just then, test that little lock button until you're, yeah, you know, you're secure. Yeah. <sighs> okay. Apple has acquired a company. I'm happy to say as a podcaster that does uh called pop-up archive that does um uh whatchamacallit uh, uh transcripts but yeah. not so not like I, I gather not for user readable reading but searching yeah. but for searching yeah and discovery and, and categorization. This is really, really big uh, because not only allow you to have like well, imagine having a Google style alert for a topic that you want to hear discussed uh, and you find out that uh, someone someone you've never heard of had a two hour interview with David Letterman uh, because they happen to live in the same Montana community uh, and Finally, and this this podcast you never heard of is suddenly like front and center for you. Or imagine it being able to uh, do a Apple Music style recommendations for here's here's some podcasts that we think you're going to be interested in based on the episodes that you hearted. We're not not just saying that uh, not just uh, going by the keywords on here's what uh, here's the thing is is uh, is and uh, uh, MacBreak Weekly are categorized as, but you have, you seem to heart a lot of shows in which we're talking about Macintosh and Macintosh security flaws. Here are a bunch of other not just podcasts but podcast episodes. They're talking about subjects you seem to be interested in. So this could be such a cool tool uh, for making the podcast app a lot more relevant than it has been for a while. Nicholas Qua, who writes a, uh, a podcast 
newsletter for uh, Neiman Lab called uh, Hot Pod discovered uh, this. Yeah, I am I mean, we don't know what Apple's going to do with it, but it would be a nice feature to add to iTunes. <laughs> Let's not add any Well, they've also, they, I mean, they're rolling out, they're still rolling out the podcast analytics, and this could also play into that yeah. because it, yeah. It's just a well, bunch of more data. You heard a podcast and you, and you go, when did they, talk, did they about talk about this? About that? Right. Being able to search for something and just, it doesn't have to be, it can be 85% accurate and still find What was that thousand dollar thing Alex recommended? Oh, there's 900 of them. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, well, it, it could also, I mean, with a little AI, it could auto chapter. There's you know, a lot of valuable your, things. Your the problem is Apple often acquires technologies and they use a little bit of it, or maybe they just wanted the engineering team and mm -hmm. you don't yep. see it necessarily incorporated into we'll it. see it soon. You know, a lot of times facing takes, you know, what we saw, what we now saw in the iPhone 10 with the facial, you know, the, the an emojis, right. uh, that was, you know, two years ago that they bought the company. The uh, Wall Street Journal reports that Ireland and uh, Apple have done a deal. Remember the EU said, hey, Ireland, you owe us $13 billion in euros, uh, uncollected back taxes from Apple. Ireland obviously doesn't want to pay that, so they went to Apple, and Apple has agreed to fund an escrow fund to put $15.46 billion in back taxes in an escrow fund pending uh, appeals. I don't think the EU didn't say that, they, that Ireland owed them the money, did it? It just said that they had to, they had to collect on it. Because it's, I think they. I, I think my they, memory I is they said you better give it to us. <laughs> no, I think you better get it. I believe the EU just. said We're going to fine you. <laughs> but I think the EU is saying is telling Ireland that it has to collect that money because otherwise it creates an unfair uh, playing field for European countries. Yeah, but I don't think the right. EU is asking for the in, money. In I its think 2016 it's, decision, the uh, European Commission said tax arrangements that Ireland offered April in 1991 and 2007 allowed Apple to pay annual tax rates of, get this, between 0.005% and 1% on its profits for uh, a decade. The commission had given Ireland until January 3rd of 2017 to recover the money. So I think the ultimate, like, see, Ireland doesn't want the money because they want their relationship with Apple. Right. They, they said, I don't, we don't want the money. And this is the EU said, you have to take the money. And then I don't want the money. And Apple doesn't, you know, obviously want to pay the money. Um, well, App and Apple's moved away from the Irish, uh, the double yeah, Irish yeah. and uh, to, so to we, a new um, system to avoid taxation. So I think that Ireland in the, in the big, <laughs> in the biggest way to just get back at the EU should take that money and build pay them in pennies. No, 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 oh. no, because they don't have to pay. They don't, have, they don't have to pay it. It's their money. It's, it's Ireland's money. They're oh, yeah, not, right. the EU's okay. not, so the Ireland should take that money and they should invest it into training centers that train in Swift all over the country to make <laughs> Ireland like you got fifteen billion dollars. Yeah, there's you, a way to do. So, I thought you were yeah. going to say invest them in Bitcoin. No, 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 no. But, but they should do it as a. It, it, they could take that money and they could make Ireland like the center of you know every school, every you know like an, Ireland's not a very big country. I mean, they they could actually cover. They could like, build their own EU with that money. Just build a second well, EU no, but they, Brussels. They, but they could build this whole like Apple development thing. Inside of Ireland, uh, with that money, they won't do it. They'll spend it on roads. Give everyone They'll spend it on reasonable things. Like you also food. said that uh, <laughs> that Luxembourg did the same thing for Amazon and owes uh, two hundred ninety four million dollars, or but Amazon owes them thirteen billion. That's a lot of money. Build a couple cities with that. I mean, it's yeah, yeah. It's exciting. So uh, right now they don't have access to it. It's in an escrow account. Both Apple and Ireland are appealing. They'll take but, well, as soon Let's as Ireland comes fair, age, I don't they think get the money as long as they go to school, to high school, right? Yeah, I don't think I don't think an appeal is going to hold much water. We're pretty; it's pretty clear. The, the EU is a very they're not yeah, going to bend very on this definite point of view. Yeah, yeah. so I think they're that also, money is is shot. They're they're also very very well invested in making sure that no one of their states can become a favorable tax haven compared to the rest of them. I think that's so what's going on, right? They don't right. want it so to if they, be, so, yeah. so if there are laws that says that, that, that say that, that Ireland has to collect these taxes, but Ireland's saying, nope, we're cool. Any company do, who doesn't want to pay what they owe us, that's fine with us. That puts them at a really serious advantage to all the other countries in the EU. I love the register's headline, The Sun Rose, You Woke Up and Qualcomm Sued Apple Three Times. <laughs> yep. Qualcomm is uh, suing three more lawsuits pertaining to 16 additional patents they say Apple is using in its iPhones. Uh, and then, of course, Apple's counter suing over other things. And it's just got it's just a, it's still I think we concluded last time it's a it's a negotiating strategy tactic. Maybe not the maybe not the friendliest negotiating uh, 
uh, tactic, but um, Qualcomm wants to make their own modems, and this is a way to soften the yeah, ground. In Qualcomm's filing, they actually quote Steve Jobs, 1994, when he said, Picasso had a saying, good artists copy, great artists steal, and we have always been shameless about stealing great ideas. That's a little bit of a smoking gun. That's, now, that's daring. That's, that's that's a way to go. Definitely. Well, can you keep in mind that Picasso did not run a photocopy machine? He was talking about artists draw inspiration. Yeah, but but Jobs says specifically, works. we've always been shameless. We being Apple yeah. about yeah. stealing great ideas. I don't think he meant stealing patents, but maybe he did. No, no, no it's no. sort of like yeah. making making the Mac after looking at the Xerox right. Park machine. It's and they paid Xerox. Market, it's, but it's, the, yeah. yeah. There's there's the famous when the Steve Jobs and uh, and Bill Gates were having that argument over over Windows like where Jobs like you stole everything you stole like Windows from uh, from from Apple and and Bill says as far as we're concerned you we you you stole from Park we stole your TV after you stole it from Park or something close to that. Apple is going to stop accepting 32-bit uh, Mac apps. They did that, of course, with iOS 11 on the, the uh, iOS platform, and now the same thing will happen starting January 1st. So if you've got a 32-bit Mac app that's still on the Apple Store, it might be time to update that. How hard can that be? It's mostly abandoned apps that are going to be lost, yeah. right? Well, but I'll, I'll, the only the only thing that I think might affect people is that sometimes you have old hardware that works just fine. We're talking about like a document scanner or a, an industrial piece of equipment that uh. requires a piece of software that you paid someone to write for you like eight or nine years ago. And the thing works perfectly fine. But now that you're going to have to choose between having all the security updates of a modern Mac or, or a modern Mac that will not even run an old version of the operating system and have be, being able to still use this document scanner or this industrial process or this, uh, this scientific test equipment. So it can, it can be a really painful thing for people that have not been updating esoteric hardware on a frequent basis. Now, of course, like this just means... Rosetta and the Carbon, right. when they abandoned Rosetta and Carbon, and you hear Rich Siegel talk yeah. about how he's moved BB Edit from every era of the Mac. <laughs> <laughs> the same thing. I mean, this, of course, you could download it. You don't have to get it in the Mac store, but Apple does say the lack. This is the last Mac OS release to support, and I don't know what this means, to support 32-bit apps without compromise. Doesn't mean they mm -hmm. won't support it in going forward. But this happened. Exactly. Remember that when you when you loaded a 32-bit app on iOS 10, yeah. it said, "Oh, you better tell the developer this is good. This could slow down your iPad," which it didn't. What they should really say in that message is, "This app's going to stop working on the next version yeah. of iOS." But yeah. uh, I wish they had been a little clearer about that. Anyway, that's the warning. Now we don't know what'll happen in the next version of Mac OS, but uh, there'll be some sort of compromise. Don't know what that. Maybe is. it's emulating yeah. it. And takes a small performance hit. Could be, could be emulators, could be that certain frameworks will not work anymore because they're just not interested in keeping you compatible. Yeah. A, a lot of bad stuff can happen. So it's, it's it can, again, the, when, I, when I hear about problems like this, usually the reports I hear back are from education, uh, medicine, and science research. Because again, a lot, of these, a lot of these organizations are using custom-built software, even custom-built hardware to get things done. And now all of a sudden, the system that well, they use to to run a to run a train system has to be is going to is going to have to live with a bad vulnerability I it, because I don't think it won't run at all. I think it won't run in the app store. So I, I think they just won't let you sell maybe. it. Maybe. So if you're building your own, well, I think you're fine. I think know. that it, you but, just can't. You just can't. But but right. it, it's. So there's that one thing, there's one sanction, you can't get it into the app store. But they do say 32-bit apps will not will run with some they're gonna sort put of an compromise. They're gonna I bet you they're going to wrap it into an emulator, and so then it's going to be probably half the speed. Yeah. Okay, we don't know. Oh, no, my pup. Yeah. <laughs> well, if I'm if I'm running a power, if I'm running a sixty eight hundred forty processor, I'm kind of used to. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> the, the slow the slow cookery uh, right. contemplation. <laughs> Our show today brought to you by Video Blocks from Storyblocks. Uh, this is another product we are happy to use. We used to spend hundreds of dollars a month on uh, on uh, royalty free images and video clips and After Effects uh, templates, things like that. Till we found Video Blocks, one hundred forty nine dollars a year, a year for unlimited stock media, including one hundred fifty thousand videos, one hundred thousand audio clips. 400,000 images, all the stock media you need. They have After Effects templates, motion backgrounds, and you also get, that's by the way, that all that content is royalty free. You can use it for commercial or personal projects. Once you download it, it's yours to keep and use forever. $149 a year, but there's more. You also, they have a marketplace, which I love. This is really nice. This allows creators to sell directly to you. 
and they keep 100% of the money, but you will get discounts as a member. That's 5 million additional marketplace clips. So if you're doing, I mean, any kind of video, if you need a, a, a helicopter view of, of San Francisco at sunset, if you need motion backgrounds for your lower thirds or whatever, use video blocks. That's what we've been using. No more footage with an ugly watermark. That should never happen. No out older, outdated footage. Join the 90,000 customers, including NBC, National Geographic, the History Channel, the Travel Channel. I've actually kind of made it a habit now to watch the credits at the end. They'll often say, additional material provided by Videoblocks. And I know what that means. <laughs> Videoblocks. Save yourself time, effort. Save yourself a lot of money. Videoblocks.com slash MacBreak. $149 a year. Unlimited. One one flat rate. That's the way to do it. It's amazing. They have not, a, it's not just video. They have After Effects templates. So they're they're like, you're looking here. at it. Yeah. You know, and, and it's just, it's really not worth trying to, recreate the wheel most of the time like we, we throw we use this kind this stuff all the time anthony because, loves this he's, because he's, he's we're always saying anthony we need a new motion background for the holidays or whatever yeah, and, yeah. video blocks comes from story blocks and it's available right now at videoblocks.com slash mac break great price ah uh, let's see uh oh lots of stuff here we got a, there's a lot of little little stories here we'll go through um I, uh, where was it? Oh, yeah, here it is. Tim Cook says 1.8 million developers in China. 1.8 million developers in China, and Apple has paid out, what was the number? I'm trying really, to find 17? It. Some huge number. Am I looking at the wrong story? 16.9 billion. Whoa. There he is. 17 billion from the Chinese. That's a lot of dim sum. That's a lot of dim sum. 25% <laughs> of total global app store earnings coming out of China. And this is why it's such an important market, isn't it? Because if, by the way, if they've paid seventeen billion, that means Apple's made what three or four billion? Five. Five. That's right. Five billion. Yep. Not a little bad. more than five. Five and some change from China. But it's not App change, Store it's alone. Yeah. That's a lot of pennies. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and you know, it's a, lot it, of it's a two way street because Apple obviously wants to be in China, benefits from China, but Apple's an important brand in China, so I think. Uh, Tim is using some of that leverage to encourage uh, uh, China to maybe open up a little bit. Well, I mean, Apple hasn't no. made their hardware available any more to China than any more than they have in the United States. In fact, this is one of the big reasons that Apple fights the U.S. requirements for they don't want it to, to have to do it for phone, others. Yeah, because as soon as they allow, as soon as they help the FBI, they're going to have to help the Chinese government. Like it's it is you know they they won't be able to get past that. Mm -hmm. uh, Tim was at a conference. Uh, and, well, it's funny because the headline from Bloomberg says China promotes censorship at this conference. Uh, t <laughs> Tim Cook speaks at China event that promotes censored Internet. But uh, Tim said the theme of this conference, developing a digital economy for openness and shared benefits is a vision we at Apple I mean, you, you can debate the yeah. policy or not, but Apple is pretty consistent about they believe that they have to engage, that they cannot affect change if they don't engage. And I know people have different opinions on that. Some people think that you're reinforcing it if you engage. Some people believe that it's better if you starve them out. But everywhere in the world that Apple possibly can, they try to stay engaged and move things in the direction that they want. It's just it's just what Tim Cook's Apple believes is the right thing to do. Google, interestingly enough, was also at this Wujang conference. Yeah. And Google, as you know, has taken kind of the opposite road. Like, we're not going to deal in China, we're not gonna. We're not gonna. It's harder when you're a service. Like Apple's had some of their services blocked as well. It's it's yeah. it's easier to sell atoms than it is to stream bits in China. Yeah, yeah. it's a, it's a. I think this is going to be a really big problem for Apple in the future, maybe even the near future, because China they are putting journalists in jail. China is scrubbing, trying to. There was a earlier this year, someone named a species of beetle after the after 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 the, their leader, and they try to have all that scrub because it's an aggressive form of beetle. Uh, they're trying to create support for a. They've mentioned about a idea about having a. Uh, every citizen on the internet has to be identified. They have to use their real names, and also developing a sort of a social rank for each one of them. And that's we're not just talking about oh no, you didn't just uh, you didn't post Nazi things, you didn't attack people on the internet. We're we're also including things like how loyal are you to the party? How uh, have you been visiting sites that we re regard as a threat to the current leadership? And that sort of stuff can affect your ability to get housing, to get medical, to get jobs, to get medical stuff. 
and all this a lot of this stuff is going to require devices and services to support whatever protocols whatever apis they're going to need to support it there's going to be a time when their apple is going to have to say we are perfectly fine. We really want to sell apps. We really want to sell iPhones in your country. Whatever you want to do to your journalists, whatever you want to do to your citizens, we are perfectly cool. We will help you out with that. Or they're going to have to say, no, you're going to have to stick it. Uh, this is a little bit worrying, the speech that he gave, because you know for a fact that he gave the, he gave the keynote. And you know for a fact that that had to be screened carefully before uh, he was allowed to give that presentation. And... <sighs> He didn't say anything. He, he, there were words that were carefully, carefully chosen that basically said that we are partners with China. Uh, we have, we've, uh, they, there was a tacit support for what China is doing, and that there is room for Apple's point of view and China's point of view in the same marketplace. Uh, but at the same time, uh, China was uh, giving, uh, giving their own keynotes there and talking about how. We will never allow the Internet to create a situation that will harm China. And by China, they're talking about the leadership and the party. So I'm not willing to vilify China, uh, Apple for participating in this. I'm just saying that as much as I respect the point of view that uh, you have to work, there's a point, there's a point, uh, you have to start off by trying to work with uh, an opposing force or a government to see if you can influence them positively. But there is going to be a point at which you're going to have to tell them to go stick it. Uh, and when this point went, and I want this point to happen before Apple decides that this is way too big a market, uh, because at that point, I'm not going to believe them when they say that we think that it's po we can do affect positive change from within. I'm going to start to suspect that they just don't want to say no to all the money they're making in a market. And they don't want to say goodbye to uh, they don't want to lose sales to Huawei uh, and other actual Chinese manufacturers at this point. It's a very, very tricky line and they can't try to play both sides of the fence. I am. It's interesting. This kind of uh, mirrors uh, the, the way we deal with North Korea. Uh, I, I think that it is better to be in conversation than to be at odds, and yeah. and to recognize that uh, China's interests, you know, are specifically for China's needs. You say it, it's to support the Chinese, the Communist Party, and the Politburo, but I think that they. I think it's become clear as China makes this gradual turn towards capitalism and openness that th that the leadership there and I'm, I'm not sure about the the new premier but the leadership there uh, understands that it would and it would even like to have an open society but uh, but is worried about the risks no. of such a thing they they talk about cyber security and and so forth and and uh, I, I think that um, the best way to do that is to is to help them understand the value of openness in terms of I think and that I think that's what Tim Cook's gonna, trying to do they're, they're, they're not going to change. They've, they've been doing the uh, the the general secretary is not a, not a not a moral leader, and he's not it's not a cult of personality by any by any uh, by There's any no stretch. Mal. But no, again, again, he's a he's a, he's a it's it's not a situation like that. But nonetheless, you, the fact that you can quash something on the internet that might be interpreted as that this is a, a, a Xi Jinping. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm mispronouncing his name. I, I read I read about him, but I don't Xi hear Jinping. people talk about yeah. Xi Jinping. Xi Jinping. Thank Jinping. you very much. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry about that. Uh, but yeah, it's the it's the the fact that they they would want to censor something innocuous like someone named a beetle after him. That and I know there are more dimensions of that, but that's the sort of thing that. A more open society would shrug off. I don't think that they want to become more open. I think that they want to continue their current system, but while acknowledging that the internet is going to make that much, much more difficult. And they're not going to answer to that by becoming more open. I think they're going to answer to that by creating more technological solutions that allow them to control what happens, what their citizens do uh, with the internet within their own borders and even to some extent outside of their own borders. I do. It's a so very do you think Tim problem. Cook should not have done the keynote at the, the WIC? Um, from, I don't think that, I think that he should have used that opportunity. Uh, I, again, I have to, I have to guess that the, he, that his words were screened by outside parties and he was allowed to say what he wants to say. I think his delivering the keynote is problematic in that, uh, the entire conference, this internet conference they hosted gives credibility to, uh, the Chinese government's point of view on what can happen to the internet in China, what they're allowed to do. Um, I do think that if it means that he can have meaningful talks with party leadership about what they can expect 
from their partners or what they certainly can't expect from their partners. We're not because we, we got to hear the keynote, but we didn't get to hear about any of the conversations behind the scenes that led up to it or followed it. I don't think at this point it was a bad thing for him to have done. But like I said, there's going to have to be a time where Apple makes it really, really clear that there is a line somewhere we will not cross. And if they and we are willing to abandon this market, if they ask us to do something that is a, that is against our principles and the principles of our users worldwide. Well said. Apple has uh, classified the Mac minis released through mid 2011 as vintage and obsolete. <laughs> These are the first Mac Minis. It's because of the, because the, of the acid wash, Leo. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's just exactly the, the, bell, the bell bottom Mac from yeah, now on. They're the oh. first with a Thunderbolt port, the first without optical disk drives, uh, but they're not the most recent Mac Minis. So those are those are most recent. Quote unquote. They're, get, they're getting closer. They haven't really they haven't updated the Mac Mini in Imagine 1, when the last released days. one is obsolete. That would be yeah. that'll be amazing. Yeah. That so what it does though, yeah, it starts the clock ticking. For the uh, the three year old, for almost four year old Mac Mini, uh, since this six year old Mac Mini has now been obsoleted, uh, pouring one out for it. Tim Cook said it's an important part of the uh, product lineup. Yep, I hope yep. he means it. Uh, I think we're going to see new Macs next year. We're going to see, I hope, sometime this month, the iMac Pro. Yep, and then. Maybe a new Mac. We know I'm at new Mac Pro in 2018, and maybe a new Mac yep. Mini. Uh, I want a new Mac Mini. That's all yep. I gotta say. Yeah. I, I, it's I'm hoping to see. It's I mean, product. Yeah, I mean, I think that uh, we use a lot of Mac Minis. They're just great glue for us. You know, I don't think we use them as a regular. Would you buy today the most recent Mac Mini, which is I have three felt, years I out would, of date? Uh, yes. Yes, I mean, just because it's, it's still useful. So we we rack them. So when they're you know a yeah. lot of them are, and they're like kind of the, the other thing that I've used them for in the past is basically an Apple TV on steroids. You know, like it's just yeah. like a you know you throw it and you yep. connect it to your TV, and now you've really got a full on computer. Um, in fact, that was the first use I had for the Mac Mini. The Mac Mini was just I want to have all my video and everything else, and I don't you know I want more than what my Apple TV provides, and it it works great that way. So, um, but but uh, for what we use them for, the last I mean they've been even going back to 2011, they they do what I need them to do. I mean, I'm not expecting yeah. them to be a high performance machine. I'm expecting them to do relatively straightforward yeah. actions. For, for for general users, I wouldn't recommend buying one for because only two things are possible in my mind. Either Apple is going to come up with something to replace the Mac Mini, and it's going to be so much. It has to be so much better than something that's that old. Or Apple is never going to do anything with a Mac Mini ever again, which means that maybe you should. This is an opportunity to think about other. Uh, little computers that cost not so much money that can take the place of a Mac Mini that maybe don't run the Macintosh operating system, or even switching to an iMac for that situation. Uh, I don't. I just don't think there's a lot of real return there uh, because it's. I, I think it's so important because it's. Uh, you don't know what you're going to use a computer for. Even when you think you know why you're buying it, you think that you you're buying this Mac Mini because you need a good desktop computer because you don't want to keep you don't want to do what I did and keep your MacBook plugged into the desk for so long that it kills the battery because it never gets a chance to discharge. Uh, but then you find out then uh, that actually what you needed a small computer for this other room in the house or something that you can actually throw into a suitcase if you had to, or you have upgraded uh, to something else. And you've decided that it would be nice to have a Mac Mini uh, in the living room that's running Plex and running a media server uh, and can run games on the big TV. And that's the sort of flexibility that you can get with a headless Mac. I don't think that uh, I don't think the Mac would be quite as good a, an ecosystem if it did not have something in the lineup to take the place of a Mac Mini. So I think that if Apple doesn't come up with something to replace them to either upgrade or replace the Mac Mini in another year. I'm going to be so worried about the future of the Macintosh. I'm worried already, but if they don't come up with something new for the Mac Mini in the next 12 months, I'm going to start really believing that somewhere in Cupertino there is a date circled on a calendar as AOL for the entire Mac line. Excuse me, the entire consumer Mac line. I mean, for what for what we use, if Apple opened up the Apple TV slightly, we would be able to use Apple TVs to to do what we do. Interesting, you know, like it wouldn't, you know, it's it's um, you know, the, this the, is the, a the, fourth the generation to do what so we do. So we're we're at to the Coffee Lake is an eighth generation mm -hmm. Intel processor. They're still selling the fourth generation 
dual yeah. core i7 in here for a thousand bucks i might add bumps. I, mean, I don't think you buy it. Not even part. spec bumps. Not e just this is a four year old or four generation old processor. If I, I, I can understand them not replacing it until they really have a strong opinion about what to replace it with, but I just don't understand no spec bumps. Yeah. It's 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 terrible because remember that when they when they upgrade processors, it's not just a faster processor. You get things like uh, encryption and decryption happening on the CPU. You get things like video transcoding happening on the CPU. You get things like low power states on the CPU. Intel builds these things to take as much of the load off the operating system as possible to make it as as 2017 a computer as you can build around the CPU. So when you're using it with early, earlier generation CPUs, it might benchmark as the same, but it's not going to be the same computer. And that's why you start when I'm at someone else's house and they're showing me their Intel Nook and uh, the NUC computer, and I'm like, "Oh, wouldn't it be nice if my Mac could do that? Mm -hmm. Oh, wouldn't it be my mm -hmm. ni nice if my Mac Mini was that power uh, non-hungry?" And it's like, "Oh, please don't make me get right. another Windows machine. Please I, don't." I do think that, and, and I think that it does come down to. I mean, we there are some incredible. Uh, PCs now that you can buy on a board that are, I mean, I'm kind of amazed. I mean, you can do all kinds of high end. I just wish you could run bucks. Mac OS on them. Exactly. I mean, this is <laughs> this gets back into me wishing that Apple would I just know. let the OS, you know, let let let, let it OS fly, 10 free. fly let free you, and just let it go. Let it go. It would, it would revolutionize all these little all these little computers that are like 250 bucks, and you can suddenly throw it on there. And you know, I think that because uh, it's such a small part of Apple's you know, income and they'd still make the standard. I mean, people like us would still buy, well, I wouldn't, I'd buy, cause I, I would want to buy beefy computers that I have five, you know, GPUs in and everything else and then throw the Mac on it. I mean, that would be cool. But, uh, but we have Linux and windows for that. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> We're being played off. Uh, so uh, thank you to my agent. Thank you to my... Uh, <laughs> we dedicate this to the Mac OS. Let's make sure we talk over this so we don't get a YouTube takedown. <laughs> notice on it. Sing along, as we say. We're learning. This is educational. Let Wouldn't it go. Keep it in. <laughs> Heaven knows I tried. Don't let them in. <laughs> Don't let them see. Be the good girl. This episode of Mac Break Glee is brought to you by. Good chill. Don't feel. Don't let them go. Everybody sing along. <laughs> well, now they know. Let, let it go. go. Let it go. Let it go. Can't hold it back anymore. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> and to all the parents who've heard that song one time too many. I have no children. I've never times. heard that oh, yeah, song all I the apologize. way through. <laughs> or even the uncles who've heard that song one time. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> thank, thank goodness my, yeah, my, my. Well, Adina Menzel just sings, she sings that loud enough for Andy to hear almost every opera. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, according to KGI Securities, Ming Chi Kuo again, Apple will ship 25 million AirPods in 2018. That's double its 2017 sales. Again, this is complete speculation. We don't know. Uh, what Apple has sold. He's they sitting there at the supply chain. He's counting them, Leo. Yeah. He's well, counting he, where they come know, off the line. It has been, uh, for, at least was for, uh, can you get an, uh, AirPods today uh, by going to the store? I mean, is it, it was a week last week. When I checked last week, week, it was about a week. But you, yeah. some stores have them in stock. You can go to some stores and just get them. I, You know, now having tried pretty much every Bluetooth uh, headphone, including the horrible Google earbuds, yeah. uh, that the, Apple did something magical with the uh the AirPod. And what's interesting is that because of Beats, and they haven't, I don't think Apple's really taken advantage of it yet, but because of Beats, Apple could be, you know, keep the W1 to themselves and just keep on putting out. I mean, I would really prefer Apple to give us a couple more choices. I don't, um, I know Beats has one that is got just the different cable. sizes. You yeah. Know? Well, yeah, Beats I mean, I has would, the over the ear, they have the noise canceling, they have the around the ear, and they have the in ear, and then the around the ear neck. Canals are Those not are all W1s, though. Same. Those are all wireless. Yep. Okay, yep. then I maybe so I. So you do it. have Beats choices. Okay, yeah. This is no, these are the Jabra. Up. These are the Jabra elites. These are for sport, uh, for runners, but they're very similar. It's got a case. It's got a Bluetooth headset in it. But these come with six, three different sizes of uh, you know buds that you put in your ear, plus three different sizes of the little uh, inserts that go in your ear to hold it in. They really hold in well. But what's interesting about these, they work much like the AirPods. The sound quality is actually much better than the AirPods, and they're less expensive. But they do heart rate, and they will do coaching. So if you're a runner, you could put these in your ear 
and it will tell you what your heart rate is. It will say you're at max, you're below max, you need to run harder. You need to run. And in fact, when you first install it, you have to change the ear buds and the inserts until you get a good fit and it can measure your heart rate they say stand still okay that worked now j run around jiggle your head <laughs> let's make sure we can do it and then they want to do a vo2 max so there's this these things have some really interesting sensors in here uh i would like to see apple you know this is jabra uh i would like i think apple there's the technology exists apple could do a little more health sensing in those airpods i hope that next year will bring not just you know sales of the, ex the existing AirPods, but new models of AirPods. It's is interesting, it too, because there's an AR path where they can, because audio AR is is probably more advanced than video AR right exactly. now. And there's a lot that Apple could do with it. But there's also the like, health aspect that you mentioned. And it'd be interesting because Jeff Williams doesn't just run watch at Apple. He runs all of health. And there's probably a lot of stuff that they're playing with. Well, and, and I think my thing is with the Beats ones is that they don't make any ones that aren't, that aren't connected, which drives me crazy. Like, I don't yes. want... I don't yeah, like these the are thing. not connected. These, these I know those aren't, but those aren't yeah. W1. Like, that's... Well, the, but you know, I W one doesn't make that. These, these you, once you pair them, it's no different. It's the same. It doesn't. You can. They have a Jabra app. It uses Bluetooth LE mm -hmm. to tell at the battery level. Right. I mean, you have you have you know, I don't know. I feel like, uh, and these are these are less expensive. And uh, the, I think the quality of the sound is much much better too, especially if you get the inserts right. My my only problem is I'm not a runner, so. This also has something that the AirPods don't have here through. So these seal much better than the AirPods. And you can push a button that gives you background noise as well. I just feel like they could do better. There's This stuff exists. It's out there. Um, you know, and, and I, I, yeah, I don't know why Jabber doesn't put the W1 in. but um, funny, did you, did These were 249, sport? but yeah, yeah the Elite Sport. But I was able to get them at 149. I guess that, that deal yeah, is that off away. now, yeah. It must have been the cyber... Yeah, that was their Black Friday deal. So 149 was a great deal. And does it come off. with all the inserts? Yeah. So you, it, you, that's the only negative. You have to spend some time matching the inserts to your ears to get the perfect fit. But, but once that's you do, what you want to have the perfect fit. I know. That's once you do, it's amazing. These things, they're as good as molded uh, headphones. I can, I can dance around, run around. And, you know, Apple, I think Apple is... <laughs> well tested. I wish I, I wish Dalrymple was here to give you music to that <laughs> and they don't fall out and actually they don't look as dopey as the AirPods you know what I haven't tested is the microphone because it's not it doesn't have anything coming out of your ear Leo there's no real degree of dopiness when you have giant bits of plastic shoved in your ears it just looks like I have gauges in my ear canals that's all it looks like you have those what are those big loops that they play yeah, the you know like the, that the kids yeah. are yeah, yeah is that what they are I look like one of the kids huh. Um, I'm, I love the get sound quality of this. The now. bass is amazing. It really points up where Apple could have done perhaps a little bit better with the Air AirPods. Not to knock the AirPods. You're right. I mean, the, everything that the AirPods well, it's, do it's, is great. Yeah. I also, got these two. What I would love to see, though, is what uh, Google did with the Google Buds, the earbuds. I would like to see Apple do. The earbuds, as you're walking around, if you get a notification, say, you got a notification. Would you like me to read it to you? Yes. Would you like me to reply? Yes. You could do all of that. That's the augmented reality I'd like to see mm. in in uh, Apple's AirPods. That that is amazing. That that stuff works extreme. In, uh, not I'm not talking about the Google's product. I'm talking about the the concept works extremely yes. well. Uh, it's something that you kind of wish you kind of wonder why it hasn't happened two or three years ago because we have all these assistants and it should be able to do more than just do a tap and then ask a question. It really should. You really should have the ability to tell it, please do interrupt me for certain things because I just want to be taking a walk, but still not missing out on the house that I put a bit on because I was taking a walk instead of sitting by the phone. Uh, I would want to, I talked about this on Twitter on Sunday, and I wanted to ask you, Renee, about Elcom Soft's yep. post, the iOS 11 yes. horror story, the rise and fall of iOS security and if i can bottom line it it's just they've made some changes particularly to the encryption password when you restore an iphone or an ipad that uh, favor convenience a little bit more and security a little bit less would you agree or is that not the case no absolutely there's two areas one is the itunes encrypted password because some people were like, it, it were saying oh i saw on the internet it's a good idea to encrypt it or i want to do a quick setup and i know it'll bring passwords while i encrypt it and then add a password quickly never remember it and because the passcode is stored on the device it's not as simple as switching a computer it, it, it's 
very hard to make another backup after that. And also a lot of people were just, there's so many passwords now, they were continuously forgetting their Apple ID because they made it a better password or something. And so what Apple did is with iOS 7 and the iPhone 5S, Apple went to what Steve Gibson called a, a crypto brick. They made it incredibly secure, but they started running into problems. And this is that classic debate that I have to credit Dave Nanian for giving me sympathy towards. Originally, I was like, no, security, Uber, everything. Like, just make it more secure. And Dave stopped me and said, wait a minute. For most human beings, they're not worried about their photos being stolen. They're worried about losing their photos or losing access yes. to their photos. Yeah, we're not and all so, under investigation by the FBI. <laughs> no. So the changes here are entirely towards data preservation. You can have fail safe or you can have fail secure. And Apple previously, everything was fail secure. Now they've made several specific things fail safe so that you could, there's a better chance to recover. I was thinking that maybe I preferred, like, for example, you can use passcode mm -hmm. to unlock your Apple ID. And uh, Elcomsoft was panicking, saying, that gives you the keys to everything. But if you have physical access to somebody's iPhone and their passcode, you can already go in, access their email, access their SMS, get tokens, reset their – you could, you have the keys to the kingdom. So this is just a, a slightly more convenient way for people to do those resets. And then I realized that I use a password instead of a passcode anyway, so I wouldn't even bother turning it off because no one's going to get my – Like, it's really hard to get a passcode. Ask the FBI – in San Bernardino, but to get a, a, a strong password like Andy was talking about a couple of weeks ago, uh, there's just uh, unless the nation state is after you, you're probably. Fine. And so what what Elcomsoft says, and I think that this is great advice, uh, regardless, is because now your passcode is that single barrier, make sure it's at least the six digit passcode, yeah. and really we should all do what you do, Renee, which is to use a password. Uh, the problem is you got to enter it, and especially with Face ID, I find myself entering my passcode a lot. Yeah, and also there's mobile device ma like you you there's mobile device management that you can do, and like for some people it's an enterprise thing, but Apple also has iOS configurator in the Mac App Store, and if you're if you're sophisticated enough to worry about this, you can probably download that and just play around with the settings and and put it more to your. So life. you could make it more secure, in other words, if you wanted yeah. to. Yeah, I mean you can remove all sorts of the ability, like you can remove the ability for people to change all sorts of things. Right? Well, what I would suggest is you know at least have a six digit passcode and. Consider having a password. My my yeah. my, uh, my kids' iPads are are over secure. Like as a parent, <laughs> if I put them underneath my thing, I feel like I should be able to log in and reset their password because they, they of course, what they did is my they kids, forget it all the time. Well, my my son was yeah. looking at my daughter's iPad because resets the so, password, so he code. changed the passcode yeah. and then he forgot it. Yeah, <laughs> every Rich, time. Uh, Rich Mogul, who's a really good security expert, he wrote an article for Tidbits um, the other day on the same topic. And he said, you know, as a security guy, and this is how I feel too, I, I don't like intellectually, I don't like some of these changes, but he had locked himself out of his daughter's iPad because he set it up and then did something else and didn't back it up and yeah. did this. Uh, and you, you, at some point, you have to realize that humans are on the other end of it and you have to try and get the best I mean, balance. They've, they've been sitting there on my couch for six months waiting for me to go to the Apple store to get them reset. Like, I was just like, because there's no other way to do it. <laughs> we have an iPad point. on our kitchen. Your table, like, same thing. I yeah. got to bring it to the Apple store. And I'm like, when am I going to have time to take it to the Apple store? <laughs> you, know. um, you mentioned this, Renee, in passing. There was a little flaw in iOS 11.2 yeah. uh, huh. that if you uh, had notifications turned on for certain third-party apps on December 2nd, Boom! <laughs> so it was it was iOS 11.1, and what happened was oh, it was wasn't 11.2 in the calendar okay. in okay. the calendaring system, which we've seen before. We've seen like uh, daylight savings time bugs, and we've seen some other bugs like year like capital Y uh, lowercase Y year problems. But with this one, uh, because of this error, local notifications would just send over and over again. Fill up the Philip memory and crash Springboard. Is that so what happened? Would, okay, so it was yes. a, it was a Springboard crash. Yeah, it would, but most reset. people can't tell the difference. Right. Um, like it, it's because it, it looks like it's spinning and coming back at right. you. So like it's real. Whether the phone actually turns off or on, it's, it's impenetrable to most people. Right. So Springboard would crash. And then depending on how often you had local notifications, and people are confused by this too. There are remote notifications, which is like Facebook Messenger, Twitter, there, things, sports scores, things are coming off the internet. Local notifications are like your meditation app reminding you to meditate. If you have like a, like do or a multiple to-do list app reminding you, it's things that originate from on your device that's being sent to you. Those would crash. And you could either set back the date, which had a lot of issues associated with it because that breaks a lot of things, or you could go through and sort of laboriously turn off. If you know what are local notifications, it was quick. But if you didn't, You'd have to turn off a bunch of stuff because do not disturb didn't work. Do not disturb does not stop notifications. It just mutes the dialogue. So you'd still have the error. 
Um, and then Apple, again, moved really quickly. They could have branched 11.1 uh, and tested it and put out an update. But instead, since 11.2 was ready to go, the Gold Master had already shipped earlier that day. They just pushed it out immediately on very early Saturday morning. 11.2 also adds Apple Pay in messaging. I've tried it. Somebody sent me $5. I sent it back. It worked great. <laughs> nice. <laughs> if you in have Apple US, Pay already yeah. set up, you have to go through one extra step to turn it on for messages and uh, actually, it seemed like I just pressed a button and it was working. So, And there's no, if you're using Apple Pay Cash or you're using a bank card, there's no transaction fee. If you're using your credit card, there's a standard, I think, 3% transaction nice. fee. Yeah. So I like that. And, uh, you know, uh, I didn't want to take the five bucks. I just considered it a test, a proof of concept. And I you can send it back. I did. That's was, cool. It was, so we saw it work both ways. The minute this was announced, Georgia just sent me $5, $5, $5, $5 <laughs> in a text. Luckily, that doesn't work. You have to enable it. <laughs> That's terrible. I know. <laughs> Did she know what she was doing or she was teasing? She, oh, she absolutely she, knew. No, I, I don't think she thought yes. it would work. But, you know, so, and when you get the money, for. it's in like an Apple account now, right? Apple Pay Cash. It's like a buffer so that yeah. you, there's no transaction fees on that. So you can sort of uh, withdraw that there, if you want to. You'll be doing it or you can, buying yeah. apps or whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like, like, your a, like a buffer. Yeah. Yeah. But you can, pay, you can pay other people cash. You can pay use Apple Pay to pay at retailers or you can buy it on Apple, you know, whatever. And I guess you could pull it out if you needed to, right? And turn it into real cash. And, I, and yep. now I think I can update my watch to do the same, right? I haven't seen if the watch, I wasn't paying attention, but the watch update wasn't out this morning yet. Uh, it was all supposed to come out this week. It's just the iOS 11.2 came out early. Apple neglected to update the uh, release notes to say that Apple Pay Cash, because it was supposed to all come out together. But it went out early. They neglected to update it. So everyone's like, where's my Apple Pay Cash, dude? Uh, and so we've had to wait a few days for it. Let me just, let me just look on my, uh, on my watch here and see if... Uh if there's an update, software update, checking for update. And the uh, survey says, I think it's out, but, I, but I'm but i waiting to see. It's it still, would be 4.2. It's still thinking about 4.2. And then that would then that would allow me to use my watch to send uh, money to. Yeah, and how you can I, use messages or Siri. You can and, use either one. And can I just add money to my Apple wallet or uh, how does that work? No. Uh, so when people send you money, it goes in there. And I think you can add iTunes cards, but I'm not positive. Oh, I can't actually test it because I, I have uh, my phone is set to U.S. Yeah. But it, it made me it said I had to confirm with the U.S. financial institution, which was. <laughs> I just want to point out that like when you think about progress. Yes. It's 30, 30 years ago, um, you could not get cash on Sunday. And now you can send people cash from your it's watch. It's amazing. I know. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that, you know, isn't that awesome? <laughs> you know. So there is, a, so I am getting update 4.2, 177 megabytes, new features, improvements, and bug fixes. All right, so we're going to let that uh, run. It's going to take 43 minutes. This show is not going to take 43 minutes. <laughs> um, oh, I like this. I've mentioned before a live core. This is uh, a Vic Gondotra's uh, new company. This is a, uh, a, a, a company that made the first FDA certified uh, EKG. It, you just hold in your hand. And you could use your iPhone or your Android phone, and you could send it to your doctor. Now they have an FDA-certified Apple Watch band. A live course Cardia band is an EKG meter in your watch band. How about that? This is particularly useful for people who have AFib because they, you know, that's a kind of a silent killer. You may not know. So if and that you hits all ages, I mean, we have a we have someone that that uh, has worked with us that had it, and he had a you know he's, I mean, way more healthy than me and had a heart attack. Yep. You know, like you know it's. Jeff Jarvis uh, told us about this because he's he's been in the hospital for uh, arterial fibrillation, and uh, so this is something you can have, and uh, you you put it in your band, and then whenever you want, you can put your thumb on it and uh, and send an e take an EKG, send it to their doctors, or send it to your doctor for a fee. Now, does that use that uh, secret port uh, on the on the band margin, or does it use like a Bluetooth LTE? That's Bluetooth an interesting LTE? question. The other one is Bluetooth. Yeah. It doesn't have any physical connection. So I would guess it's continuing to use Bluetooth. It's just a more convenient form factor. It'd be, it'd be interesting. If you if you have these sort of smart watches for extra sensors that could, doesn't need to have their own battery, doesn't need to worry about pairing or anything like that, that really does show how, if that's true, it really show how forward-looking the design is. Yeah. Uh, see how it works. For the state one. And then, oh, it would net. Oh, wow! It also monitors to let you know if unexpected heart rate conditions. So that is a big step forward. Since you're yep. wearing it all the time, it can keep an eye and say, "Hey, you may be going into AFib, 
uh, you know, wow. What's interesting wow. about all of this stuff is that as the sensors, and they've already talked about the fact that the sensors can see a lot of things, high blood pressure, um, uh, sleep apnea, those are all things that the sensors, as they are, are already 96%. And as you start talking about, this is when Apple talked about um, randomizing your information. Uh, as Apple, as Apple gets all that information in a randomized form, not specifically to you, but to an overall view of things, their ability to see things about you um, is going to be pretty profound um, yeah. as, as far as that goes. And then everyone will really realize that they shouldn't eat anything with corn syrup. Corn syrup the cause of arteri arterial I, No, no, it's not the cause of arterial, but I'm just telling you that as as we use these these things, we're going to realize that corn syrup is as bad as they say it is, and we should not have it in our Well, home. we know that. $199, although the chat room's saying if you're in the uh, Stop AFib community in the U.S., you can get a 25% discount with the uh, the code Stop AFib 25 so that makes it uh, even more affordable. This is, I think this is this is a big deal. This device, I really think this is interesting. Uh, absolutely, and I, I think that all everything that I've been seeing is that Apple would be very very pleased if it in the next uh, five years it became as well known as a healthcare company as it is known as say a music provider. Uh, they don't want anything to make it more well known than as an iPhone seller. But <laughs> in terms of their in terms of their second tier products. This is not just, hey, this is a way for us to sell watches. It's like, no, the Apple Watch is a healthcare product, and we want to continue to increase the portfolio of stuff that it can do. Yeah, it was a great this, interview it really, with it really Jeff Williams. Level thing. It was a great interview with Jeff Williams on CNBC talking about the Apple Heart Care, um, the health study, sorry, heart study app that they're putting out with Stanford and the tele telemedicine movement. And he just said, we spent almost no time discussing how to monetize health. Yeah, It's, <laughs> it's stuff that they feel deeply about. You can, after you get the recording, you can then record, uh, you can record how you feel as well in an audio and send it off to your doctor. That is, but I think what's most interesting is unexpected heart rate. Would you like to take an EKG showing up on your watch? Uh, I think that's really, this is, that's life-saving at this point. Yeah, it's it's wouldn't be it's just the ability to say well, what if you could just simply have like a flight recorder recording the past 30 minutes of whatever's been going on where it just keeps looping 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 and if there is an incident your first responder can through bluetooth and hopefully you're conscious and can give permission for this basically say here is what your heart has been doing for the past 30 minutes so it knows what yeah. what what triggered it off or what's what's looking at Boy, I tell you, if I had AFib, that'd be a reason to go out and buy an Apple Watch. But I think even even if you think you might be at risk, I mean, my, my father had a had a heart attack um, earlier this year, and uh, you know he just felt bad. You know, like like right. he does. But this is the kind of thing right. that will tell you that yeah. you need to go to the hospital. There's right a now. reason like you, you feel bad, to, and we do you know, know the sooner you get treatment, the higher your uh, chances of a full recovery. So yeah. Yeah. time not, is not, of the essence. It's not it's not just that, but sometimes people uh, there. If all of a sudden my heart rate went to 200 beats per minute, I would freak out. I would know that something's very, very wrong. Even if it went back down to normal, like after 10 minutes, I would say the next time I can get the next appointment I can get to have myself checked out, I'm going to do that. But what if for the past five years that's just been happening off and on and you're sort of used to the, oh, well, it's just something my heart does, whatever. Because you know that this happens every couple of months and it's never, it's, you know, startling for about five minutes, but then it goes away. You just don't pay attention to that. It would be wonderful if you had a device that tells you this is something you should you should choose to correct this problem. This is something that you really really want to have We're checked out. It's the numbers that this the, the deviation from the norm that calls our attention to the fact that this is not something that we can just simply say, oh well, that's a blip in the system. No, this is something that's been happening to you every three to five weeks, and this is not normal. Of course, the danger is once you start measuring it, it starts creating another behavior. You know, like when when. Uh, when stationary bikes came out with heart sensors and I was um, in high school, um, we used to have competitions on <laughs> how far. I, I could get to 212 before I fell off the bike. <laughs> so it was uh, the stupidest thing. One, not the stupidest uh, thing I've ever done. I've done a lot of stupid things. Um, but that was getting up pretty high up there. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? You're probably a little healthier now. At the time, my, 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 my resting heart rate, I was wrestle, a wrestler. At the time, my resting heart rate was in the high 30s, low, low what? 40s. Like 40, really about 42, 43 was yeah, about This man I, is dead and my watch has stopped. But, but it was, uh, but yeah, it's definitely not that now. 
Quick, before we take a break for our picks of the week, Mark Gurman, another scoop. This one, not about Apple, but about Google, YouTube, and Amazon's streaming devices. Remember a couple of weeks ago, Google pulled YouTube from the Amazon Echo. It's off again. Uh, Google has pulled support for its YouTube video service from all of Amazon's streaming media devices, including the Fire TV. Uh, actually, that'll start January 1st. Uh, but you can't watch YouTube videos anymore. We, we really appreciate that feature because you could watch our show on the uh, Echo Show right. by asking for it. That was back briefly, but now Google says it's taking action because YouTube apps on the Amazon products aren't made by Google uh, like the uh, YouTube app on the iPhone is. Mm -hmm. And uh, because Amazon doesn't sell some Google products on its store, it's a... It's so not a only... I'm trying to understand. It's not only does Amazon have a, a, a YouTube product they shouldn't have, but I don't have an Apple TV product from Amazon I should have. So yeah, have it's a mess. Okay. Um, this is, I would say, well, I understand why Google's doing it. Uh, they said Amazon's implementation of YouTube violates our terms of service, creating a broken user experience. They fixed it in November, but now then Amazon pulled uh, Nest devices uh, from their store when uh, they put their own device up. So would Amazon be happy if Apple just made Prime Video for Apple TV because they didn't? Well, I, I just have to say, if Amazon wants to be retailer to the world, they've got to stop these kind of weird anti-competitive practices yeah, this is, and sell everything. This is how you get yeah. yourself into an antitrust. Yeah. You know, you know, it's, they're not there yet because they don't have enough of the market. But if they continue to go down the path that they're going, you know, eventually they're gonna. It's gonna cost a lot of money. Yeah. What's amazing to me is like a couple of years ago on this show, we discussed horizontal lock-in versus vertical lock-in, and a lot of people gave us feedback saying, "No, no, that's silly. That'll never happen." Amazon would never do this kind of stuff. And here we are because any company eventually wants to seek to their once own you, best interest. Once you own the market. is Now, yeah. the, the Apple TV app uh, for Amazon Prime Video was supposed to come out by the end of this year. It's still not out. Yeah, it was announced at WWDC and then Amazon actually tweeted out that it was coming and we still haven't seen it. Some people, every time there's a new Amazon premiere, people are like, That's, this is it. This is when it's finally going to come out. And now Grand Tour is coming out, I think, tomorrow or the next day. So people are hopeful again. But... Uh, engineers on Reddit have said that it's been done and it's just Amazon has not released it. And it's tvOS apps are, I, I don't want to speak for developers, but they're ridiculously easy to make. Netflix was there at day one. And no, Amazon it's is not, clear. Yeah. And, Am and what makes it clear is Amazon refuses to sell the Apple TV as well. Yeah, be because it would be a bad experience because it doesn't have Amazon Prime Video. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and, they're, and they're really cute, too. If you, do a Google, if you do an Amazon search for the Google Home, they will take you right to the, right to the dot, uh, Echo Dot. Uh, it's like, uh, uh, right. the hard part. So it's like eh, the hard part okay, is whatever. that they, um, uh, that you know, it's. I think Amazon obviously is playing hard. Once you get something into the house, it's really hard to get something else in there. I mean, once yeah. people are tied into that, I mean, yeah. I have. I have both because we do these. I kind have of things, both but, too, but I use the Echo a lot more. Uh, the the Echo is more. It does the responses are tend to be better. Um, That's and, what you're doing. Yeah, my kids are. They just stop as soon as the show came out. They just I ignore the, the the Google Home doesn't yeah. even exist because they they sit there and look at the screen you and they watch TV. They're yeah. playing. My kid, I don't even know how to run the Echo. I mean, the show. My kids are sitting there playing games. They're watching movies. They're like, they, <laughs> like they know how to use be it. They're sitting in this corner in our kitchen. Calling it's it's a seven inch TV. <laughs> yeah, they, they, and the kids, <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, you know, inch. I'm we like, got a big one in the living room. No, I was kids. like, got a. 70 inch over there with surround sound i mean you could like you know and they're like well they couldn't find it on they couldn't find whatever they're watching easily on the on easier. the apple tv and yeah. and then you know we got yeah, anyway it's a long story <laughs> we're gonna take a break your picks of the week folks coming up but first a word from texture here's a product that everybody who has an iphone or an ipad or for that matter an android phone or an android tablet ought to get the texture app imagine it's kind of Netflix for magazines. Over 200 of the nation's best magazines for a very low cost, $9.99 a month. And that's our special twit price. I'll explain that in a second. Uh, on your iPad, it, the next time you take a flight, you don't have to worry about it. You favorite the, uh, the magazines you want. They'll automatically download. You have every page that's in the current newsstand issue, plus all the back issues, plus features you can't get in print, like video, and by the way, if you're a photographer, you'll love the quality of the images in magazines like Shutterbug and National Geographic. They just look better because they're not screened and printed. They're right there on your iPad. The New Yorker's there. So is Vanity Fair. So is Wired. So 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 is every, everything you'd want. Bon Appetit and Real Simple if you like to cook. If you are into uh, following the political scene, Time Magazine, The Atlantic, 
uh, when the cold winter hits, because winter is coming, let a far and Airbnb mag take you away and inspire your next vacation. Over 200 premium magazines. And, and you know what I love about it is I don't have to subscribe to the trade magazines like Billboard that I would normally have to pay a lot of money for. They're right there. They're right there. It's, it's the, this was the end of me getting magazines. Yes. I mean, like getting paper magazines. Why? It's, Why have yeah, all the clutter nice. and the guilt? There's guilt associated. When I subscribed to the New Yorker, the weekly, it mm -hmm. would pile up and I'd feel bad about it because I didn't read it. And, I, and then I'd feel like, well, you got to read the November one before you start the December one. It all goes away with texture. I, texture. I, I travel, and, and and for me to be able to have the magazines, I don't. I want to have. I you know. I, I don't read a whole magazine. I dabble. Like, yes. I want to watch a little. Texture of this really little facilitates that because they have this yeah, exactly. curated, you know, new stuff, noteworthy stuff. Here's topics you're interested in. Right. Magazines you may never have heard of. Uh, to get your free texture trial, you see, at People and Us and Entertainment Weekly. See, I don't feel guilty buying those gossip mags. And I, you don't have enough time these days in the yeah, grocery you line to be really. Seen, you don't want to be seen want to reading be seen. People magazine. You might no. want to read it. You just don't well, want to Well, I do. Read it. So I got to know. You just quietly our, look down at, at, at your iPad. And yeah. as far as everyone knows, you're just working. Our, 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 writing our, a, you know, I got to know. <laughs> is Gwen still with what's his name? I got to know. Bum, bum, bum. Bum, bum, bum. Inquiring minds. Find out. To start your free texture trial, go to texture, T E X T U R E dot com slash twit. Texture dot com slash twit. If you choose to continue, listeners will get texture for just $9.99 a month. That's over 30% off their listed price. Texture dot com slash twit. By the way, great holiday gift, and there are lots of options for uh, holiday gifts. If, if you go to texture dot com slash twit, Twitter. I like it. Texture.com slash Twitter. Don't forget, nine ninety nine a month is a special price. Only available at that address. That's over 30% off their listed price. But take advantage of that. And get something for your family and friends. All right. Time for our picks of the week. Is Soldier of Fortune in there? I don't know. Let me check. <laughs> I'm thinking Secret of a, agent monthly. I'm thinking of a career change. <laughs> when, I was, uh, when I was like 14. My mom, my mom would always buy. She also carried about this that we read. So if we went to the bookstore, whatever it was, you want, it was kid. Pretty much, you could buy whatever you wanted and just hand it to your mom. You know, when I was a kid, because she, because you're reading, because we're reading, and she just cared that we just got good at reading. You know, she didn't care what we were reading, and uh, and so I, I was, I remember being home and and uh, um, I had. You know, I had I was twelve years old or thirteen years old or whatever. I had Soldier Fortune magazine that I was reading, and and one of my friends said, he's, "They're like, uh, did you did your mom know that you read this?" And I was like, "She bought it." <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm sad to say they do not have either Guns and Ammo or Soldier uh, and uh, Fortune magazine. So don't don't get texture for that. They do have Sailing World, Saltwater Sportsman, Ski, The Best of Outside Outdoor Life, Marlin, Flying. They got a, it's amazing boating, biking, backpacker. Maybe I'm looking in the wrong. Maybe I should look in men's uh, men's interests. Most most gerunds are covered. In <laughs> most of the gerunds. Andy Anako, your pick of the week, sir. Uh, what a good pick this week. Uh, Daniel Jalka just released a new version of Mars Edit. Uh, Mars Edit Four drops today on Tuesday. As a Ooh, matter of fact, I love Mars and Edit. And it's a, that's the blogging it's the blogging app that had sort of a uh, what is the opposite of a renaissance? It, no, nothing. It, it's it's been around for years and years and years. Daniel bought uh, rights to it uh, ten years ago. He's an amazing developer. Uh, and there was a time when WordPress's own uh, uh, online web based editor kind of outpaced it a little bit in terms of creature comforts and there were some features you could do uh, for WordPress blogs inside the online editor you couldn't do in Mars Edit and in addition to a whole bunch of other really cool, cool features Mars Edit 4 takes an, a leap now back leapfrogging beyond uh, the online editor uh, that uh, WordPress gives you uh, by uh, it's, a, it's a much much more it's like the difference between uh, an online editor and a desktop app this is a desktop Mac app uh, it's a much more it's much prettier it's much cleaner a lot more editing features that you had before that are more familiar to you if you're used to using a word processor uh, but also a bunch of stuff where that uh, things that were a little bit more difficult in previous versions are a lot easier now uh, more of word, modern WordPress features uh, like uh, are, are are supported directly inside uh, the app itself you no longer have to go in 
into the WordPress editor in order to set some things about how you want this deployed and how you want things marked, uh, that sort of stuff. Editing, if you're using Markdown, it will translate Markdown, excuse me, it will uh, let you type Markdown and basically interpret what you're doing visually on the fly. If you've got custom templates, it will automatically find those templates and make sure you get a WYSIWYG editing experience as you go. Having things like featured images is now something that's built into the, the app itself. Uh, they freshened up the interface to make it look, it used to look kind of uh, 2002-ish, 2003-ish, and now it really looks like a modern, modern, modern app. Uh, and one of my favorite features is it's always had the ability to uh, act as, one of the things I liked about the online editor is the ability to uh, edit uh, a post anywhere because no matter where I log in, it's going to be there. And WordPress, uh, excuse me, and uh, Mars Editor has always worked where you can edit it locally on your, uh, you can create something locally on your Mac and decide not to put it onto the blog even as a draft. Uh, you can, but that the the way that it works is that it will always maintain the, your drafts folder as being the same thing between each one. So I can start editing, I can start writing something in Mars Edit, get 3,000 words in, and then go onto the online editor on a Chromebook, for instance, and have it exactly Exactly there because it's keeping both things synced. Uh, but the thing, the new twist that they added is the ability to back up your entire uh, WordPress uh, database. So every single post, all these hundreds and hundreds of posts that I put on my blog, it will just simply download it and keep it locally. So if, a, I can do, I can spend my six-hour flight going through and fixing typos on stuff I've been writing for the past two or three years. But it also means that if my site goes down or if it gets hit by a bad person trying to be mean to me by taking down my site uh, and uh, and ripping apart uh, my WordPress database, all these hundreds of posts that I've written will be safely backed up uh, in uh, Mars Edit on my MacBook. Uh, it's fifty bucks, but it's a professional piece of software. If you do, if your medium of publishing is WordPress or, or, or Another popular blogging platform, you've really got to have Mars Edit. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm guessing that you're tell, you're about to say, well, that's 50 bucks, and I think that the online editor I have is works just great. You will come to appreciate how much freer you can be when you have the ability to write completely offline uh, and write in an app environment as opposed to an online environment. And plus, it'll it'll give you free uh, for the first two weeks. All features are unlocked. It's a demo version. Excuse me. Uh, it'll it'll work. It won't ask you for money for two weeks and for those two weeks everything just works all you do is just give it the url of your of your blog it will pause for a second it'll ask you what's your username what's your password and then it'll just simply start downloading your uh, downloading all your posts and you can post immediately it's perfect 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 cannot rec it's not only a, a really useful tool it's one of those beautifully crafted pieces of software where you know that this is some some old world craftsman in a in a shop deep, deep, deep in the woods somewhere, doing nothing but forging swords, doing nothing but binding books. They, they do this one thing and they just... <laughs> Daniel's going to laugh. <laughs> I hope so. I mean, no, he's but not, but he's Andy, not Andy gonna, tell us how you he's really He's not going to laugh. Daniel Jalka, Old World's Craftsman. He, sh he, sh he shipped today, so he's going to be sleeping until at least Friday or Saturday. I'm not going to hear from him until Monday. <laughs> he has to relearn the names of his name of his wife and his kids. We love Daniel. He's a great guy. He's been on the show, and I agree with you 100%. And in fact, I'm thrilled to hear that it's out. In fact, the perfect uh, tool on your Mac for blogging would be get that and get the new MyPick Pixelmator Pro, which just came oh, out. Did it just come out? Just came out. You can now install that. Very and expensive man, frame. well, I think it's sixty bucks. It's not hugely expensive, right? I don't. I it's can't not remember. Photoshop money. Yeah. It's not Photoshop money. Yeah, sixty bucks, and a whole host of new features. Massive update. We've been uh, waiting for this for a while. It is out. So if you've been waiting, I've used the original Pixelmator forever, and it is a perfect complement to uh, Mars Edit because you often have an image that you want to resize or get in there as your hero image, and you need a little editor. Uh, Pixelmator Pro is a great uh, choice. So the we, two of them should be on your shopping list this week. We, uh, I put, we have like a handful of Photoshop um, licenses. I have one. We've got maybe four or five other ones in the company uh, because there are a couple of things. People send you a Photoshop file or whatever, and and you want to make sure it's compatible. And and uh, and I've been using Photoshop since 1992, like a little muscle memory um, issue. Um, but all of the rest of our machines are all Pixelmator. Like, so we, we basically, you know, unless you really need something that's in Photoshop, we'd rather, you know, we'd just rather have you do Pixelmator. It's, to be honest with you, it's faster. You know, a lot of the responsiveness of the, you know, you're able to watch all the plugins in real time. You're able to do all those things. And it supports it's, raw, which is yeah. great. Yeah, it's you great. shoot camera raw, which I do. Uh, and now they say they have some machine learning involved in the uh, enhanced 
image editing, including automatic naming of descriptive names to your layers. <laughs> That's <cool. laughs> So there's layer one, two, three, and four. Uh, automatically straighten images using horizon detection, magically remove objects, recreating image areas with stunning realism. This is something we're starting to see. Mac Fun's doing that too in Luminar. We're starting to see uh, this get better and better thanks to uh, AI. So yeah, Pixelmator Pro. A couple of things to buy today. Renee Ritchie, your pick of the week. So first I want to just echo what Andy said. Jalxy did a heck of a job on this. Can I Mars call him edit. Jalxy too? You can. I, it <laughs> took me forever to pronounce it properly, but yeah, uh, Jalxy did a heck of a job. Really, really outstanding work. Pixelmator as well. Um, I My god kid, my oldest godson, uh, he went to high school now and they do, even though it's in Quebec, they're doing Spanish. Each school has a thing. One school does Mandarin, one does Spanish, uh, one does Italian. He went to the one that's doing a Spanish uh, program or testing a Spanish program. So he's been using Duolingo oh, yeah. to help him as, to sort of fortify what he's learning in school. Uh, the my youngest godson is is in he's still in primary school, so he's using it to help him with French. Uh, their father is of Italian descent, and while he got yelled at a lot in Italian as he was a child, he doesn't speak it fluently. So he's decided to work with them and pick up his Italian. I did two years of Mandarin in college, but I haven't used it very much over the last few years. So I started doing, when they joined it again, I started doing the Mandarin course. Uh, and there's just, there's so many languages now, so many more than what they launched with originally. And the programs are really great. And I was confused at first because I started doing it and it started throwing words at me that I didn't, that it had never explained. And I, sh I, sh if I had just done that program, like I knew them because I had a very, very, very basic idea from college what it, what the words meant, but it was under like I was getting everything right, so it was ramping it up. And if I did it wrong, it would be ramping them down. So it was sort of intelligently adjusting to my level. And it does all these things, like it gives you little rewards, and it tells you if your strength bar goes down, you should review that course. Uh, and it's just it's a really fun way. Uh, before I go to bed, when I woke up, I used to just read Twitter or look at Instagram or check out news.app, all those things. Now I just I make sure that I start the day with a few minutes, you know, one to three quick programs on Duolingo and I finish the day the same way. And it's just uh, I think that language is the way that we think. And the more languages, you know, the more ways to think, you know, um, we're the going to Japan to in uh, the spring. So, and yeah. I used Duolingo to brush up my French. I don't know any Japanese, but I want to be ready I have no idea. This is the, I, you're learning hiragana right up front. I don't know why, but uh, I figure I'm going to do this until we go in Japan to Japan in April, and maybe I'll. My kids love it. Yeah, my it's the best just, way to and learn. They're like eight and ten, just sitting there fiddling with languages and finding the ones that they like, and it's it's amazing. I'm just going to guess. Nope, wrong. It's ni. Okay, see, I got I got to learn. Okay, continue. So now I'll know that's ni. What sound does this make? E e e e. Got that. Yeah, got that one. It, I like the little bidding. It just makes you feel good about this. Oh, crap. <laughs> neat. Oh, this was neat. neat. The, I'm the knights who say neat. Okay, good. Cheat. <laughs> See, I'm learning Japanese right just like now. That. Just like that. Wakaremashita, Anjin san. It is now. <laughs> Thank you, Renee. Now time for your pick of the week. Alex Lindsay, so, let me get my wallet. Uh, no, this isn't too bad. Oh, good. In fact, I think it might be free. Wow. So, so um, th this, this is how these, these picks sometimes evolve. So Stu Mashowitz, who I used to work with at, at ILM, posted something on Twitter. And then one, and then I think uh, either Kent Nichols or Brent uh, Schnarr in our company put it in our, our little internal list in Slack. And then I looked at it and I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. Uh, it, it's called... Uh, Focus, F O C O S. Focus. Focus. Okay. And uh, what this does is it takes advantage of the depth sensor <gasps> and lets you re, like, play with it. But only in the like in a selfie. Only the ones that you set it. You shot in portrait mode. Oh. Um. So if you set it in portrait mode and it captures that 3D information, you can change the the, the bokeh. Um, you can play with it, make it sharper, oh. make it out of, and you can actually play where it's placed as well. So you can you can look, you know, you can change 
you know, all those little bits and pieces, and you can actually preview it. You can hit a button, and it, and it cuts it and shows you all the slices <gasps> that were a part of the photo. So you can fix it. Well, you can fix it, and, you, and just seeing it. I think they have there. There's the slices there, so yeah. you can see that's the slices that the iPhone took as far as depth goes right. of figuring stuff out. And you can also see where it's going to have trouble. You can see like in that cat one that's on here that the ears didn't get red very well yeah. and everything else. Can now, you fix that? I, uh, I don't think you can fix that, but yeah. but you can at least see it. You'll know where. You can open it in Photoshop and edit the depth map if you really want to. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Can you extract the depth map? Yeah. So in the new version of Photoshop, it will take the because there's a depth API now in iOS 11. It'll take the depth API and make it a channel for you, and you can actually go in and edit. Is that it. iOS Ooh. Photoshop? No, Photoshop no, on desktop. the desktop. Wow. Yeah, desktop Photoshop. I didn't. I didn't know that. Just that. Anyway, so but this this is this is something you can run on your. Uh, you just it, it literally just finds all your portrait photos immediately. It says, "Can I see the photos?" And it just shows you all of them, and you start playing with it. And um, and I think it's either very inexpensive or free. So I think it's like you know the, they're maybe down the road they're going to ask you to upgrade to something else. But um, it's it's F O C O S by Xiao Dong Wang. It's free and it's free, cheap at half the price. Dang, that's a zero, Alex. Dang. <laughs> Well, we have had fun today, gentlemen, and I thank you all for being here. Renee Ritchie is at iMore.com. The return of the Vector podcast has been hailed as a red letter a day in this century. So everybody must listen. I 2017 more didn't totally stink. We yes. got that podcast back. <laughs> one thing, one good thing in 2017. iMore.com. Oh, please remember that when I hit you all up to be guests. Please. <laughs> iMore.com <laughs> slash Vector. And uh, iMore.com for Renee's uh, fabulous work and his, his colleagues' fabulous work if you're trying to keep up with the, uh, the uh, Apple world or the Pokemon world. That's the place to go. Thank you, Renee, for being here. Appreciate it. Uh, Mr. Andy Anako is a proud technology journalist at the Chicago Sun-Times. And he is uh, soon to be acquired by somebody, right? The Tribune is, is being bought by somebody. Yep, I don't know who to suck up to uh, yet, but I've got, I've got the basket of mini muffins packed up ready for an address label. CWOB.com, no matter what happens, he'll always be at CWOB. And, of course, I-H-N-A-T-K-O on the Twitter. In the SIGAC. Mr. Alex Lindsay is also on the Twitter, at Alex Lindsay, L-I-N-D-S-A-Y. And I think he wants to Lindsay something. <laughs> no, I, I, uh, I, I like to you know, let things mature, you know, before I jump into it. You Indeed. know, I, I've never tried to learn a, an instrument that wasn't at least a thousand years old. You know, like it's just, you know, like things have Fair to. Fair enough. And, and I, I've discovered, I've decided that I've you discovered play this no new sack, platform. play no but before it's time. <laughs> exactly. Yes. So, so the, I, I, I've heard of this thing that I've decided to, to, to go ahead and try using is called Instagram. <gasps> I, I, I no. It, I think it might be big. I think it, I think it actually no. might do really well. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so you can, you can find me on Instagram and, um, what is it? Instagram? Wait, no, hold on. Is it no. Alex Lindsay? It's just Alex Lindsay. I think I got it. It's a it website for posting photos. It's Alex Lindsay matter, Alex right B. Now. Lindsay. Yeah, it's a website. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I signed up for it. He now doesn't I'm even there. know what is. Yes, oh, yeah, it's yeah. Alex Lindsay. See, the, the thing is, like, look, I'm in it. The one thing I've learned is that I, I jump really quickly. See, I got one from the show already. I actually knew you were on Instagram because all of a sudden I started seeing posts from all over the world. Yeah. We, <laughs> all over the so world. I, there's some fun yeah. ones there that I shot in India last week um, while I was wandering around Old Delhi. And... Um, you had an account before. You just never used it. Yeah. I, I, I open up accounts when I see something almost immediately so I can get Alex Lindsay. Yep, and then, because yep, yep. um, I'm competing with some guy in Australia. Because yeah, I was um, following you, because uh, yeah. I don't remember adding you recently. No, I, I think I added, I've always here, followed Here's the problem, you. is I started it, and then I was like, uh, I didn't like the idea oh, that I had to take a picture inside guy. of it, and I was going to be stuck with that little square photo. But not anymore. And then I stopped using it, and that, right. that changed a long time ago. But yeah, look at, this is his first it. one. Yeah. That, that's in those that days, 2011. Yeah, so it's not like I... I did something with it, but then I was like, I don't know, I don't, I don't know what I'm gonna do with That's this. That's when it put frames around it. And that I know it was like, I, and so I didn't like it, and so I just was yeah. like, you know, the heck with this. And um, uh, so so then I a couple weeks ago I started um, playing with it again. I'm glad you did because you are a great photographer, and I love seeing your world travels. So Look anyway, at that monkey. That was that so a, awesome. Monkey and his and and uh, little monkey. That's that's an old deli on the roof of a square. Um, so anyway, it was with Alex, you feel like you're traveling. You're seeing the world. Yeah, it's it's, it's nice. nice. So anyway, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a lot of that. I won't won't necessarily 
tell you why I'm in certain places, but you can't. I'll take a lot of photos of. He like, might not even tell you where he is. He doesn't seem to use the, uh, no, the I, location I, tag. No, ever. That's my that's my whole thing. Everyone has to guess. So I told you on the show. I haven't told anybody on Instagram. So that's all now. Monkey with a mission. Figured it out. Where so you am have to I? Figure out where I am. I'm not going to tell you where any of these mm. places are. Dosa for breakfast, by the way, is, oh, is quite good. Oh, what a way to live. Good. Yeah. yeah. It was funny. So the little, the little, um, that little soup over there, the dip. Yeah. I thought it was soup. On the right? Yeah. They, they were soup. snickering at me. Don't drink that. For a couple of days, they were snickering because I was eating it like soup because it was really good. <laughs> and, then, the and, then I, and then I asked for, I asked for an authentic Indian rest, uh, breakfast and they brought me this and they brought that over and I was like, oh, oh I've, been eating the, I've been eating the dip like soup. Dosa dip. Yeah. It's like, it, was, it, it does work as a soup. Um. <laughs> Just saying, it was very good. It was very good, but but it's better as a dip. This one I I loved. It says this statue is built from glass used in HD lenses, and I couldn't figure out if you were mocking no. it or not. No. Is that true? I asked the person that was there. I said, "Is that is that ice?" And he goes, "No, no, that's the glass that is used in HD lenses. Is made into the you know, into, into the, the Buddha. Buddha. Yeah, so it's that's a HD high def Buddha. It's a high def Buddha. Wow. So in the glass. It's in the glass. The uh, that hotel was. A L E X L I N D S A Y. Now on the Twitter and on the Instagram. Yes. Nice. But I'm not sharing it. Like I don't like the whole like I, I do cross I this Twitter to Facebook, but I've decided that yeah, that is everywhere in Old Delhi. Like old, it's like this organic. <laughs> it's the, it's thing the wires that just, that's. Uh, you want electricity? We'll hang another wire. Oh no! They just yeah, but this isn't just electricity. That's like that's everything. The cable, TV, that's the everything. Like it's all just yeah. kind of add, added on top, and it's just put another wire in. And it, but it, what's interesting about it is the beauty of it is it's like it's like vines. It's like yeah. uh, like technology yeah. vines that are growing all over the. I like it. That you can see the, the, the beauty the in city. that. Oh no! I think I just see the crosstalk in it. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I why see. Has, why has there never been like a spy movie or an action movie where they fight on a rooftop and then Fall the bad guy that. falls off and, <laughs> and gets lands like in the strangled cables. and how and gets strangled by the cables or the or the good guy jumps off intentionally and does uses it like a trampoline and or, or they should they should have it where he hits it it slows his fall and he lands and then they cut to someone all, all these people's houses where all their <laughs> TV went out you know? <laughs> right <laughs> and in the middle of a cricket match so basically they all oh! swarm and kill and then him. they're all chasing him so now he's got a whole town chasing after him you know but it was just one guy. It's actually Greenland amazing. In this the is, room. What you're looking at is a single cable subscription shared among 450 yes. people. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the end of this fabulous episode of Mac Break Weekly. I thank you all for watching. If you uh, want to watch live, we do it every Tuesday right after iOS Today. That's usually somewhere around 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1900 UTC. You can go to twit.tv slash live, and there's always something going on there. You can also uh, subscribe. Download uh, on-demand audio and video if you uh, go to the website, twit.tv slash mbw, or f search for us in your favorite podcatcher. We're there. I promise. We've been doing this show since, like, 2005. Long, Forever. long time. Alex started this thing. It's his fault. Uh, we also uh, invite you to uh, check out the new Twit store for your holiday gift ideas, twit.tv slash store. We moved uh, to a new purveyor that gives us a wide range of stuff, including the very famous Steve Gibson mustache mug, which everybody must have. And I was wearing the hat earlier. It's really a nice uh, trucker's hat. But there's the mug. That is us. Tell everybody you're secure with a smug Steve Gibson on your mug. <laughs> Thanks for being here. We'll see you next time. But now I'm afraid it's time to get back to work because break time is over. Alex invented that too.